Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 484, featuring an interview with Pierre Begg of HeroicFantasyGames.com, the man responsible for the fabulous Knights of the Chalice series. Now, I hope you recall, unless you have a very, very short memory indeed, uh, that I reviewed Knights of the Chalice 2 in the previous episode. Loved it. I like the first one too. I've really been wanting to talk to Pierre for a long time. Uh, tap his brain on what it's like to be an indie uh, RPG designer. What are his thoughts on everything from turn-based combat to his inspirations to difficulty levels to, to quest and, and level design? <laughs> I mean, uh, just you know, I pretty much get into all those topics and many more with him uh, in this interview. I think you'll really enjoy this. Uh, so, without further ado, here is Pierre Beg. Well, folks, I am here today with Pierre Beg of HeroicFantasyGames.com, the man responsible for one of the most fun, or really two of the most fun CRPGs I've played in a long time. Of course, talking about Knights of the Chalice, uh, he's taking some time today uh, to talk to us about the game, chat with us about, I guess, everything behind the development of this thing, his thoughts on CRPGs, and I don't know what else. <laughs> Probably a lot of fun stuff. How are you doing today, Pierre? Thank you, Matt. <clears throat> Thank you for having me here today. Absolutely, my yeah. pleasure. How did you get started in this business? Um, well, uh, I've always loved games, you know, all kinds of games. And um, But, uh, yeah, RPGs, they have a special place uh, in my heart. So uh, for a long while, I've been working part-time uh, for a traditional job. And, and on, in my free time, I was working on uh, game development. And then um, around 2018, I, I started doing it full time. And because I just love doing this, you know, this, this uh, game development and, and particularly working on, a, on an RPG. So it's a great, great thing to do, you know? So oh, yeah. yeah. But really, I, I like all kinds of games also, board games, uh, tabletop games, you know? It's just yeah, it's like, learn about yeah. that. You grow up playing D&D, &D, tabletop. Yeah, yeah, I like that. You play a lot of the computer. You probably play a lot uh, of all that I, stuff. I would love to play, but you know, when you do the game development, you, you just, you can't dedicate that much time to it, you know? Because if I start playing the, uh, a game, especially an RPG, you know, I might just play, 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 play two weeks <laughs> and not get any work done, you know, so. You could look at it as kind of research in the competition, maybe. <laughs> hey, uh, what were yes, some of yes. the, uh, <laughs> you know, before you got into making your own games, you must have played some computer role-playing games. I mean, are there any that really stand out to you as being influential? Oh, yeah. Inspirational, maybe. I mean, just what are your, some of your favorites? Yeah, well, my, my, my all-time favorite is, is Dark Sun, Dark Sun Shattered Lens. Oh, that's an interesting one. So some of that, you said yeah. Dark Sun, some of the later... Um, uh, so you got into it after the gold box and the cool radiance that that line. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I did play some of the gold box ones uh, as well. I enjoy them as well. But uh, yeah, the most influential, I say, yes, yeah, the Dark Sun games and also uh, Baldur's Gate and um, well, you know, Planescape Torment, um, Neverwinter Nights two, and the and the first one as oh. well. Oh, yeah. Let's take a look. I, I did this Dark Sun mm -hmm. game not too long ago. Oh, yeah. This is the one you're talking about, right? Ultima Underworld, so I, I really like that one. <laughs> and if I go back earlier, I mean, Barstel was really um, um, dear to me as well. Barstel 2, you know the old one? I'll see what I'm looking at there. Yeah. Which okay. one? Uh, I was talking about ba Barstel. You know, Bastel 2, you know, those are the uh, really old ones. But Daxton, yeah, Daxton is great. This is the one, I think they've got 
Fool of Radiance on here. This is, oh, they can't find Fool of Radiance. Come on. <laughs> I know they got it there. But yeah, these are, those are the ones I grew up with. But anyway, uh, yeah, Baldur's Gate, that came out. Yeah, I was, you know, for some reason it's having trouble. Oh, there we go. Okay, let's see. Baldur's Gate, Enhanced Edition. Yeah, it's quite a bit enhanced, but yeah, I, I definitely saw some of the some influences. I think it's kind of fun you mentioned Dark Sun because now I'm thinking what thinking about that series and how that might. Uh, hey, that's I, guess, guy, I yeah. could see some of that influence maybe that I didn't see before. So, and then yeah, you got Icewind Dale, um, and of course I should mention Temple of Elemental Evil. Oh, Temple of yeah. Elemental Evil. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah that's, that's that is right. that is an awesome, awesome game. Yeah, I remember. You know, when I was playing Knights of the Chalice too. Let me just show that one here on on Steve too. You know, I was struck. You know, it's been a while, really, uh, since I played a game that really challenged me this much. You know, where you just <laughs> didn't mm -hmm. uh, reloading battles over, over and over again. But uh, I thought, wow, this game was was really tough. But then I went back and played some uh, some of the original Icewind Dale. Mm, yeah, and I, and I noticed that game is way tougher than this. <laughs> I mean, it was just really hard, even in every battle, to keep everybody alive. And you know, that's knowing what I know now. So you know, I could only imagine. You know, I guess yeah. as maybe kids, we don't really mind. I think we've. Got, I always wonder if we kind of been maybe a little bit coddled somehow by more modern games mm -hmm. where you just hardly ever die <laughs> it's really no big deal uh but really i think there's something to be said for the you know just look here's the challenge you know rise to it you can do it <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know you might have to go back and try again a few times learn a little bit experiment you know maybe even have to create a new party from scratch you know and so, yeah, i mean the, yeah, yeah i think it it's more fun afterwards, you know, when the, when you finally beat that battle, you, you get more enjoyment, you know, and also you have to think a lot more, like you have to think about your strategies and tactics. So, I mean, yeah, it's, I just think it's more interesting if there is this challenge. Um, so I want, I would like to have like most battles to be really challenging to the player. And also if you look back, like I said, uh, Barstel, you know, if you remember Barstel 1, 2, 3, those were really tough games. Huh? What are um, they called? Bastel? Ba Bardstel, you know, the Bardstel. Oh, Bardstel. Oh, I'm Bardstel, sorry. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, my God, Bardstel. Yeah, forgive the accent. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were saying yeah. like bastard or bastard. I know, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure I played that, sir. <laughs> Sounds good. I mean, uh, yeah. there is a bastard or two in Bardstel, I'm sure. Oh, the first, oh, the first, the first one oh, of the Bardstel yeah, series, these, I mean. Like that's just, one. yeah. That's very tough, very brutal um, to the low level party. Yeah, I just had Cranford on the show not too long ago, creator of a. This is like, I wish, did they have the original? This is just the enhanced version. And I actually kind of prefer the look of the old game. Uh, but yeah, I remember this game. Yeah, it's definitely true. You create a whole party. It happened to me once in your yeah. game here. <laughs> Yeah, you create a whole party of adventurers, and you know, I—I I don't know about you, I spend like hours creating a party. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I spent a ton of time on Bouts Tell Two. But I mean, I didn't make it to the in this game. I remember not even making it to the guy that sells you the arms and armor. I think it was like Garth's Weapon Shop. Yeah. I mean, you create that party. You're on your way. You got the map. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna make a beeline. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. there's a damn nomads. Oh. And, and, and just a lot of grinding, you know, grinding for experience points in um, in each one of these uh, these games. You know. Yeah, I think we tend to forget how hard these games are. Just in your mind, you don't. You know, you put you play you play them for so long, and by the end of the game, you're so powerful. You know, you're just mowing down everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you tend to remember. You forget how hard it was to get to that god-like <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah you have to spend a lot of time a lot of time and uh, because we i mean as for me i played them when i was a child you know when i was so uh, that time you are, you kind of have more time to play the games so i mean you you don't mind having to do a lot of grinding maybe no, actually, but I, I didn't mind yeah 
you know, I don't think you're coming back to Nice of the Chalice too. I, I don't remember. Yeah. There wasn't to me. It didn't feel like very grindy to me. It was like every battle was pretty much mm. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got to really think about a strategy here. Yeah, uh, I kind of gave up just doing a battle. I, I kind of gave into the. I, well, I kind of, uh, I guess, got into a mindset that uh, going into battle like the first time was going to be my trying to learn <laughs> yeah. like where everything is and what's going to happen, how's this going to flow. Uh, to reload, you know, with that knowledge, <laughs> mm -hmm. and to go back in and do a better job, and very tactical. You have to really. It kind of remind have you ever played the XCOM series? Um what game? The uh, XCOM. Uh XCOM. Uh yes, yes, I've played, yeah. I played that yeah. Mm. It kind of reminded me of playing, it felt a little bit like playing that at times. So you really have to think about very carefully XCOM, about yeah. placement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta be well prepared uh, very, and react to the yeah. like have this, you know, every time there'd be a monster, I noticed I could click on it and I would study its uh character sheet trying to figure out does it have vulnerabilities what are its abilities yeah when is it likely to do this <laughs> yeah you have, you have a lot of resource resource management we oh, management exactly. base, base management you know yeah um, and also you have like a silent, silent storm do you know that silent storm uh silent storm yeah what is that one it's uh, in a World War II setting, but it's very oh, tactical yeah. also, turn best. Turn best I don't combat. think I played this one. What is this? A 3D tactical, is this the right game? Yeah, 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 that's the right game, yeah. I don't know, I haven't played this. What, what, what 3D tactical turn-based role-playing game set against the backdrop of World War II? It's pretty good, pretty good. Oh, well, this is... Uh, no, I haven't even heard. I think you're the first person that's mentioned this to me. So this is kind of a it's a role it's a role playing game. Yeah, 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 role playing game. Ah, oh. okay. Well, I think I'll put this on the queue. It's recommended by Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be good. Yeah, that one's kind of, you don't see a lot of these games that aren't set in like a fantasy or sci-fi setting. Mm -hmm. This is kind of a historical, it seems like it's always either post-apocalyptic, uh, uh -huh. Fallout style, or yeah, fantasy, yeah. obviously few science fiction ones. So this one's actually a historical. That yeah, is yeah. interesting. And uh, do, do you know, I mean, of course, you know the uh, Heroes of Might and Magic series. Oh, now. yeah, I love yeah. those, my God, those are good. I, I love them. <laughs> you know, there's so many now. I, I kind of lost track of them eventually. Mm. I, I really like the third one and the. Oof, yeah, that is my favorite. The third one. Yeah, the third one kind of stands above, I think. Mm. I think they're still making these things, right? Aren't they like up to 12? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, look at that. That's a, Mm. You know, I can see a lot of your game now that you're mentioning. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, whenever you move, you have those green arrows displayed along the path, the path of your character. And that just comes from, from Heroes 3, you know? Yeah, I remember how fun it was, like, when you're looking at these maps and you're trying to explore, like, all these little things and get a little bit of an edge. <laughs> like, mm. Oh, that's a treasure. Oh, no, it's another attack. Yeah, I'm pretty I, sure people that are watching this show, surely they played this Heroes series. If you haven't, my goodness, you should check it out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the best part is like finding the best tactics so that you, you don't lose any of your own uh, of your own people at every battle, you know? Because yeah, that's yeah. a lot like your game, I noticed, too. You, you might win a battle, but if you had to use up all your resources and, mm. you know, your your spells are gone your potions are gone everybody's on like the last <laughs> hit point you might have to reload anyway because there yeah, might be yeah. another battle right after that and there you've gone mm -hmm. and squandered all of your resources kind of the pyrrhic victory right you have to, it's not enough just to win <laughs> you have to yeah, win yeah. <laughs> uh, intelligently right that, that's right yeah 
What kind of feedback you've been getting so far on Knights of the Chalice 2? Oh, um, good feedback, you know, but, uh, you know, uh, one of the complaints was the difficulty, of course. I mean, since the beginning, so. Well, the, I would say to those people, go back and play Icewind Dale. Uh, uh, yeah. Play the gold, play Bard's Tale, you know, because you, those games were at least equally you know, difficult starting out if, if not yeah. more. But I, you know, I heard, you know, people said the same thing, including me. I have to shame to say about a uh, <laughs> Divinity Original Sin. <laughs> you know, that game or part two anyway came out. You know, it's considered kind of a modern classic. But yeah, if you don't know what you're doing, you just get in there doing what you normally do and not putting any thought into it. You're not going to survive either. Yeah. Oh yeah, and uh, another one that's that's also a very difficult game. You know, you know, Age of Decadence. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah those developers, they kind of who who's the developer of that? Uh, uh, Iron, Iron Iron Tower. What is it, Iron Tower or something Iron like Tower, that? Yeah, Iron Tower Studios. Yep. Uh, those guys almost seem to pride themselves on that, like being really difficult. And <laughs> Yeah, it's it's part, of, it's part of the experience, you know. It's the, it's part of the the enjoyment of the game. I think it's kind of throwing down the gauntlet. And say, hey, hey, kid, are you good enough? <laughs> are you smart enough? You know, the thing I didn't like about that series, though, you know, it's almost like you're trying to avoid combat sometimes. Which to me, that's the big draw of these games. I mean, I love the yeah the combat and then really thinking about how to move and mm -hmm. so they but they think it's too hard now do you agree with them or do you uh what's uh, your how do you deal with those sorts of uh, no i don't i don't agree i mean <laughs> <laughs> no I, I enjoy it very much it's very hard uh, because i don't mind like i don't mind reloading um yeah i don't i don't mind reloading a lot and a lot and then uh, trying to find the best tactics and um so but but i i uh, i agree also i mean i understand that uh not everyone is the same so i mean not everyone wants to spend a lot of time reloading or redoing the same battles so that's why i mean i did a lot of work on the on the difficulty settings so yeah it's it's very different now i mean the game is uh, very different from uh, what it was um after the kickstarter campaign so you, even oh, if you think, even if you think that it's it's hard now, I mean, it was a lot harder before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are, were you able to beat it? Was it hard for you even? Or yeah, I mean, yeah, I, 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 I'm just like any other person, you know. So it's also hard for me. I mean, to play it. If I want to play it on the hardest settings, uh, I mean, even so, I knew every nook and cranny of the game. Yeah, I mean, that that gives me an advantage, of course. But it's still hard for me. So I can imagine playing this on like Iron Man mode. Oh, wow. Oh, uh, yeah. How in the heck would you do that? I don't remember. Oh, this must be the, I guess it's showing us those, uh, you got those two graphics modes, right? The, yes. Well, what are we looking at there? This must be the construction editor. Yeah, that's the module editor, yes. Oh, that's cool. I haven't played around with this yet. I think you're trying to encourage people to make these modules with this, right? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get some user generated content going. Mm -hmm. That'll be fun for you. People said, do people send have people sent you any modules they've created yet to play? Yes, there's uh, this one, there's several um, modules, but there's, there's a big one from the Watin, you know, the uh, Hirken World module, you know. Oh. Uh, yes, uh, there are a few other modules as well. Yeah, this is neat. So you probably did you use this tool yourself to create the Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I use the, the tools, and I, I, and I will still use the tools to create the, the new modules. Ah, oh, that is. And um, you know, I, I really love those tools because it, uh, with the first game, I didn't have them. Of course, I, I had also tools. You know, I had also tools that 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 were doing pretty much the same things, uh, but they were just very inconvenient. So I mean, this one is really good because it's all integrated. You know, you got all the tools. You got everything all together, and uh, you, you don't have to open lots of applications, lots of uh, lots of things, and it facilitates the task so many, in so many ways. Like you, 
you want to you want to specify a position you just click on the position you don't have to look at the coordinates um, mm. so i mean it's, it's really helpful and um, makes you more productive um yeah and and you can do everything with it you know you don't you don't have to use any other tool i mean except for the for the map graphics yeah, if you are if you want to do a, a new map graphic a new map environment um yeah you you gotta have to use photoshop or something like this but uh, everything apart from that it can be done in the editor Place, placing monsters placing traps placing dialogues placing uh, npcs uh quests um yeah challenges uh, special, waves. Spe special environments spells yeah you can uh, you can create new spells uh you can custom made some monsters you can give them um, class levels uh, you can create a totally new monster if you want to so yeah it's, it's very powerful yeah and we could use this to make a yeah we just had nothing but different kinds of rats to fight i've kind of had a dream about that you know the whole thing would just be working up to like the rat lord <laughs> oh hit points then you know that looks pretty easy to use oh i think we moved on to something else there but the this editor's kind of piqued my interest i'm gonna have to uh, look into that some more mm -hmm. as a module editor so that's just include is that included with every just this basic package yes yes oh that's a great it's kind of it's just really cool how do you uh is there a place to upload modules or how does that what are uh, they yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, for the time being, that can be uploaded to uh, Nexus Mods. Oh, I see. Nexus Mods. Yeah, Nexus Mods. There's a link on, on my website. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hot Mods. I haven't played around with this too much, but there's a... Are there already some mods for your Knights of the Chalice up here? Oops. I need to spell it right. See, maybe there have are there some here that I'm just not finding. Mm. We might have to. I I don't know how to use it actually. I'm probably just not searching for it, right? But anyway, you could make a module and then upload it to Nexus Mods. Yeah, definitely. Be able to, to download it and play it. Without any trouble. That's cool. So you're sort of giving back. You know, I wanted to talk a little bit while I'm thinking about it. All these different licenses and the like. This one's Open Gaming License 3.5, based on uh, what's it say there? Dungeons and Dragons Edition 3.5. Yeah, this is it's always kind of intrigued me. I don't know what's the matter with me, <laughs> but you know, I like you know playing Icewind Dell again. You know, that's using a, yeah. one of the AD and D rules, and it's very different. You know, it can get kind of confusing. Like, okay, now we're back to Thaco. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I always kind of like the feats of these later ones. And, mm. you know, I never quite like that. I'm not even sure which rule set had, maybe it was an AD and D where you had to memorize the, <clears throat> you only had like two or three spells you had to memorize and prep in advance. Yeah, I kind of yeah. like your system better. Uh, so you probably have uh, thought more about these different rule sets than anybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what's sort of your philosophy of? Uh... Uh, well, uh, yeah, I, I remember in, in in the Baldur's Gate series, you know, in, in Baldur's Gate one and two, you know, you had to memorize the spells. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but uh, um, when it comes to that, I think that it's it's better without the memori memorization because you you have more flexibility. I mean, you have you. You have access to a greater variety of spells every time in, in, in any situation you're facing. Whereas if you have to memorize the spells, like uh, you're stuck with your protection from evil spell or you're, <laughs> <laughs> you're stuck with your uh, uh, lightning bolt, even so you need you need fireball. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of um, not memorizing. Um, and also I think it's, it's simpler from the, from the technical point of view uh, implementation. Yeah, I yeah. think with those older games too, you had to, it wouldn't give you free spells when you leveled up. You had to find a scroll or buy a scroll. So they already capture that way. 
<laughs> and then to make you memorize it on top of that, just say, like, I just hardly ever get to you. Get to... Not only that, but yeah, you also have to identify the scrolls sometimes, like in some games, you have to, you have to identify everything. Like if, if you look at Temple of Elemental Evil, it requires you to identify the magic weapon or identify any scroll you find. And I don't know, it's a bit of a hassle <laughs> to do that because you know you're going to have to identify everything anyway. So it's just like uh, some sink for your gold, isn't it? With Icewind Dale, I mean, if you were playing that, I don't even yeah, think they yeah. have an Iron Man mode for that. But if you were trying to play it without it, with, without ever loading, with that core rule set. I mean, you're never going to learn spells because just about every oh, yeah. time I tried to scribe a scroll up, uh, you failed. <laughs> well, that was the only one the vendor had for sale. So what yeah. are you going to do? Just live with that and never have a, you know, fireball spell the whole game. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I remember that you know, when I was playing Ice Wendell. I don't know if it was the first one or the second one, but I was uh, short on spells. I, I really wanted to have more spells and yeah. Didn't have all the spells I wanted to cast. Yeah, I just, that, you know, I don't know about you, Pierre. Yeah. You no, know, you said you were playing that Dark Sun game. I mean, I, I was started with those gold box games. That's kind of my uh -huh. favorites, really. Uh, but I remember going, I always felt like when I was playing something like Pool or Curse, you know, there's some very tough yeah. battles. Yeah. But I always felt like I was fully in control. You know, I knew where things were going. <laughs> I just felt very uh -huh. tight. In terms of controls, when I went to Baldur's Gate, that felt really loose and wonky. That real time with pause, I just never feel. I always feel more like it's playing itself. Yeah, I'm, I'm controlling it. I mean, it looks good. It moves at a clip and all, but, <laughs> but like the fireballs, you know, just forget about it. There's no way yeah. you're gonna be able to throw those fireballs and not hit your own guys. You know. Yeah, you're definitely going to kill all of, half of your party if you, if you pull fireball. <laughs> you're, you're, you're going to miss half of the enemies and you will touch half of your own party. So, yeah, never really liked it, you know. I mean, it's it's okay. You can still enjoy the game. You can still go through the world story and uh, enjoy the game, but it's not the same, really not the same. Well, that game, it always feels to me like, like with the spells, you're always focusing on spells that buff your guys. Yeah. You know, give you some protection from this or that. Uh, you know, magic missiles about the only reliable <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, thing. But you know, that's very uh any other game, you know, I'd be using lots of uh, area of effects, sticky clouds, yeah. you know, all that yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. So that's I don't know. I guess you could say it's it's different. Is it better? Did, did you ever consider making uh knights of the chalice? Uh, one is real time with pauses. <laughs> is that a consideration at some point? <laughs> no, no, I never considered real time with pause. No, no, uh, you know, yeah, you know uh, I, I played through Neverwinter Nights to Storm of the Year, and because of course it's real time with pause. Also, uh, yeah. the way I played it is like I, I had a cleric, and I had like two or three fighters, because you know. With your cleric spells and your fighters, you don't, you never have to cast fireball or <laughs> things like this that will hit, hit your own people, you know. So that means you're, you're you're pretty limited, and your fighters are just gonna fight on their own, you know. So it's it's gonna be automatic. You don't control, like I said, you don't really feel in control. So, um, well, that's part of the fun for me is really being yeah. in control. You know, I notice people. There's certain people, I guess. <clears throat> I realize I'm. Sounds like you're kind of in my camp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we seem kind of similar uh, but I, I guess there must be very different kinds of players and maybe they only care oh, yeah. about the story or they like, really mm. get yeah watching the animations i don't know what it is but yeah for me the fun is really in, in the tactical combat and, yeah do you remember do you remember champions of queen oh Champ yes yeah. yeah of course champions of queen yeah, yeah. it's another uh, one gold box yeah, yeah this is a, you, you always have something to look forward to yeah you know with your i thought your game to me what made it so good let me just bring up this uh, i mean a lot of stuff was, was great about it but the uh, yeah you got all these sheets right yeah do you have a list here yeah there's just a lot of you know you're always thinking 
and what I like, you'd level up and you'd, you'd always have, it seemed like even very far into the game, uh, there'd always be a couple of really good options. <laughs> yeah. like, hmm, I could really use that, but this other thing looks good too. Uh, you know, yeah. it's really a great like that. I mean, you, you really know, notice yeah. if you go back and play Icewind Dale. Yeah. I mean, you level up, you get some hit, hit points, maybe. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> Just no, it's a, mm. like it took so long to get to that next level. And all you got now is like 10 extra hit points. Uh, whereas with this, you know, you've got just so many different ways you can go with just about any class. I mean, how the, it must have taken you forever to implement all of this. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of work. That's that's that is true. Yeah, but you know, some of them, you know, the inspiration comes from Pathfinder. You know, the Path Pathfinder. Yeah, I was wondering what you thought about those. Uh, what was it, Wrath of the Righteous and Kingmaker? Yeah. Did you play those? Have you played? No, those? I, haven't, I haven't played, but I'm really planning to. Have you? Oh yeah, I played both of those. Yeah, uh, yeah they're good series. I think they mm -hmm. both of them suffer a little bit because they, they try to be more more than one type of game. Ah uh, yes, I, I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like there's, they always try to do this kingdom management, or they throw mm -hmm. in a heroes. Of, Speaking of heroes of might and magic, like the Wrath of the Righteous has all these yes, heroes yes. of might and magic style. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just, uh, it could be good, but it always feels to me like it's just kind of an afterthought. Like they just yeah, put, yeah. It, put it in there just to have it as a bullet point on a, on a box mm -hmm. for a future point. It doesn't feel nearly as well implemented. Mm -hmm. As the normal role playing game, yeah. Yeah, it's just, I don't think you, I would rather have a game like yours. It's just like, look, here's something I do really well. <laughs> We're just going to focus on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's going to be great. You know, I don't want to throw in some sort of half-baked, you know, kingdom management yeah, yeah. thing or headquarters or whatever it is people feel they need to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it's just not going to, it's not really going to make it more fun. Mm -hmm. You know, like with yours, you're, you have like a, there's alchemy in there right you find some herbs and things like that's all you need <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't really need this elaborate sort of system that makes it real cumbersome and you know now my characters are loaded down with all these materials you know you know what i'm saying right these <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's okay i guess if, if you really want to have that you need to focus on it it needs to be really well done and, and fun uh yeah, that, that, that's one I'm aspect. Curious, also. If you play those Pathfinder games, let me know what you think. I, I, I bet you'll have the same uh, yeah. <laughs> opinion on it. Mm -hmm. Also, I mean, uh, Neverwinter Nights, nice, uh, they also had some uh, some um, castle management, castle construction partner, if you remember. Uh, Neverwinter Nights nice too, yeah. They, they had the... Uh, yeah, it's been, I played that one not yeah. too long ago. I'm trying to remember. But it was very simple, you know. It, it didn't dis distract uh, from the uh, main gameplay. Yeah, that's that, the thing. Yeah. That's the thing. Whatever it is, don't distract too much from the main mm. the main gameplay. This is never Winter Nights 1. Yeah, it was in, in the second one, I think. Yeah. The, um... I, I never, the thing that bothered me about this game, I think I played like Icewind Dale 2 was the the last one before this if i recall correctly but this one it bothered I, I was really into crpgs when this came out you know i was kind of super fan of the genre mm -hmm. <laughs> and i snatched this up as soon as it came out just really wanted to play this and had like the magazines i remember reading about it in like magazines i was so excited about <laughs> but, yeah. but then they, they it comes out and you only get the one character oh yeah and they have this this sort of weird henchman system. I never liked that. I don't know. It'd be so much better if you could have just created your own party. Mm. Yeah, that, that was always yeah a problem with the, with the first one, first game. Yeah, what is the deal with that? It seemed like all of these big, it seemed like the bigger budget, the big studios, the ones that are designed to have mass appeal. It seemed like they always uh, want to just give you one main character. Uh, yeah, well, it's it's different kind of gameplay. I mean, because um, they can write the story, 
uh, they can write the, the companions, the NPC, the, the companion dialogue better, you know? Like if, if you, you only have the freedom to create a single character, uh, as, a, as a developer, you can, you, can plan, you can plan out so much in advance, you know, uh, of what's going to happen with your companions, because you don't decide who, who, are, who your companions are, are going to be, you know? It's a game that gives you those companions. So, um, yeah, I think you hit the nail on, on the head right there. They're more worried about a story. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah that's why, I think. I've got a, th a theory on that is that it just, as somebody who's done some game criticism over the years, you know, it's, it's really easy to talk about a game story. If I write a review of a game, I could talk very easily. Oh, here's the story. Here's the backstory. Here's the mm -hmm. characters and all that. But you really have to have a lot of skill to talk about the mechanics, like the tactical yeah. aspects. And, you know, it's hard to make that stuff to write about it well. <clears throat> to make it interesting to read <laughs> yeah yeah that's somebody that's not familiar with it uh i don't really give a damn <laughs> you know because really that's what you're going to be having fun if you like a game it's going to be because of that stuff uh the story oh well, you pretty much you've read it in the article right so why mm -hmm. you know why should that be so much of the focus i don't know i don't want to downplay it too much but you know, if you like with the talking about Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale, I remember reading reviews of Icewind Dale mm -hmm. back in the day, and they really hammered it. You know, they really criticized it. They said the story is not nearly as good as in yeah, Baldur's yeah. Gate, and you know, it just totally feels like it's just uh, they called it like a uh, what do they call it? hack and slash. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. it's pure hack and slash. Yeah. You know, there's really no deep story arcs and. I don't know. What do you think about that? Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. I think I think game, gameplay is, is the most important thing. Um, so of course, the story should also. I mean, it should be good. It should be entertaining. It should be uh, exciting. You know, but yes, okay, the gameplay. That's that's also that's always going to be the number one thing. You know, that keeps you coming back to the game. You know. I mean, that's what you're doing 90% of the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Create six adventures and set forth on an epic adventure against evil. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I need. An evil cult. Sure, let's go. You know, give me some rats yeah, yeah. to fight at the beginning, some <laughs> dragons at the end. and That's right, know. yeah. That's, you remember how silly that... I don't know if you ever played that Skyrim game. Uh, I, I played Ob Oblivion. Yeah, I didn't play Skyrim. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, Oblivion. I don't think Oblivion is quite as bad as Skyrim in terms of. Uh, I could be wrong, but uh, I I played Daggerfall as well. You know, oh, Daggerfall? Daggerfall. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, I but the, the Skyrim. The thing that bugged me so much about that is like right off the bat, like level one dude, and you're fighting and killing the drag. From the from the beginning, yeah. Yeah, from the beginning, mm -hmm. and I'm just like. No, <laughs> that's just not how it's supposed to work. I mean, I get you uh, want to make the character feel. This is what bugs me about these modern, modern games. You know, they seem to think that you can't ever challenge the player. You want this, the player to always feel powerful. Uh, never let them lose. You know, just make them feel like it's basically like a spoiled, rotten brat. It's kind of how they view players, you know, and that just, yeah. no, no, that's just not how you do it. You know, you gotta, you gotta have a uh, patience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You gotta give them a little credit, you know, let them crash and burn, you know, let that's them right. crash and burn. If they, <laughs> if they uh, create a party and they suck and they just been messing around, uh, they, they don't deserve to win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying here? Hmm. And also, you played uh, Dragon Age. Oh yeah, Dragon Age. That, I kind of got mixed feelings on that one. Yeah. I mean, to me, the combat almost feels worse than the Neverwinter Nights. Almost, mm, <laughs> it's yeah. just really hard. Uh, it feels kind of wonky to me. And, you know, another problem. <clears throat> I think that's where really, you really move from a computer-based experience PC game to this console thing 
Yeah. You know, they really want in that. Well, we prefer you to play this with a game pad. Like, well, I prefer not to play yeah, it at yeah. all. If that's the case, uh, you know, I, I want to, I'm a grown man. <laughs> <laughs> also, you were, you were talking about the difficulty. Uh, you know, it's, it's something about D and D uh, when you're very low level, like level one or level two, and you have a party of level one characters. I mean, it's supposed to be very hard, really. Yeah. So it's supposed to be very tough. Uh, Pathfinder is the same, of course. Uh, so yeah, Pathfinder is a pretty good game in that that regard. Uh, I yeah. think you're a little bit closer to the to what so I like. I've, yeah. So if you have a D and D game, I mean, and, and it's hard in the beginning. You know, that's just to be expected. I mean, it's part for the it's part of the of the of the whole system. You know, it's uh, it's what's going to happen with your really weak characters, very low hit points. Um, yeah, you can you can make them, make them fight rats and uh, little goblins. But I mean, even even if you if you fight those things, it's still gonna be um, quite hard. I mean, you're gonna have to you can have some character deaths and total party kills maybe. So it's just gonna happen. Yeah, I've just been rereading Lord of the Rings, and you know, I read that part where Gandalf. Spoiler alert, in case you've been under a rock. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, I've read lots, a lot of the way. You know, Gandalf, uh, he gets in that fight with a Balrog, boom, you know, he's, he's out, you know, and, and of course, later on, you find some stuff out. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that would, would it have been a better story if he would just easily would have kicked that Balrog's butt? <laughs> no. Uh, Balrog. <laughs> you know, you want that, uh, you kind of like, uh, it's almost like this. I mean, I, I'm not going to say I didn't get frustrated at times with this game. I mean, I was yelling at it. I was like, I got pretty pissed off uh, a couple of times. Uh, you know, yelling. I was uh, cursing. I think even I think I even cursed you a little bit, Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> like, you son of a! <laughs> but you know, I think that's it's a good thing ultimately because it means you're really emotionally engaged in the game yeah that's right i mean i care the reason i'm mad is because i care about it <laughs> I, wa I want you to care yeah i want you to care yeah. about the battle i want you to care about what's, going to, what's going to happen to every npc afterwards you feel it so strong in this game or games where you create your own party because you're like this is a reflection i put this party together you know, I chose these feats, you know, I did, I did yeah, this. Yeah. <laughs> so this failure, <laughs> you know, if I can't beat this battle, that's like, cause I suck. <laughs> I don't suck by God. <laughs> I'm going to keep figuring this out, but you know, like you say, the, it, it could be, it can be painful, but the be, rewards, yeah. the rewards are sweet. That's why it is. But my, my, my philosophy, you know, is, yeah, you, yes, you should create your, you should be able to create your own characters, of course, you should be able to have your own party, but you should also be able to have some companions, recruited companions, that oh, yeah, good companions. I, I, as, a, as a developer, I should write some good dialogues for them, you know, because I want a good blend, you know, a good mix of those two aspects, you know, which is the story aspect and the gameplay aspect. So I try to, we try to get the best of both worlds, you know, yeah, it makes the like a game that's as good as possible. So yeah, I put Jorad in my party the first time. <clears throat> Sorry? I had Jorad here the Ah yeah, 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 yeah. I had yeah, him the first time. I think I had him and the, a druid Zardabras yes, yes. or somebody like that. I think yes, I had yes. to beat I noticed it was different. The first time I played, somehow or another, I recruited him as an NPC. Uh, the second time or not an npc a, a party member uh second time he was my enemy yeah he can be yeah beating him so yeah. i guess you put that's pretty i didn't realize you'd actually that's kind of different paths you could take through yes the, yes uh that, that is an idea uh, that that came from the uh from the um, roguelike uh, rogue, um, rpg you know the adam you know adam Ancient uh, domains of mystery. Domains of mystery. Ancient domains of mystery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That one. Yeah. 
it's got like it's got a, a number of quests like this. You know, if you if you choose one uh, one quest, you give up on the other side of the of the uh, of the game. And like if you choose to save one, one character, you can't you can't uh, you can't fight another enemy. You know, you have ex exclusive quests. So that's yeah, a that's good cool, idea. It think. definitely adds to the replay value. Yeah, I yeah. don't mind at all. The you know, I like the <clears throat> one of the things I do like about Dragon Age and those those sorts of games are those. Yeah, yeah. The characters you can meet and oh yes yes like special quests for them and, and things and they're very well done and it adds a lot you kind of like yes. the, a little bit of that soap opera like element too where they're squabbling with each other and oh not that guy <laughs> yes that, that was good yes uh, i thought this one of the things i liked about this was when you defeated you got in these tough battles with people but then that sometimes they might actually join you after the uh, the fight and you could add them and they're super good characters so again, it kind of felt like, yes, <clears throat> it was tough, but now I got this nice reward of this cool uh, <laughs> uh, yes. party members. You know, the Warlock in particular, I was like, wow. That really made the game a lot easier once I had her in the party just because she was kicking so much butt. You know, the Warlocks, you, you know, they get sort of the psionicist power and the magic spells. Sorry? I was just thinking, like the warlocks, I almost wondered, do you think oh, the they warlocks. might be a little bit overpowered just having so uh, many abilities, uh, spells? Not that I object, because, you know, <laughs> she's very useful. Uh, <laughs> As the warlocks. Why don't I just make warlock. everybody a warlock? Why would you even have a regular wizard? I, I think they are great. But yeah, uh, I, I still think the red wizards are probably more powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because of the, the transformation option. Which you get later later in the game, you know. Uh, and we'll have to create a party here in a minute because I'll get your thoughts on on all the different things. But you know, just as long as I got this particular, can you see the screenshot that got pulled up here? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, I noticed that this game. I kind of ignored this to my detriment for a while until I kind of glommed on to the idea of how important it is. But you know, all these little traps and yeah, like fire tiles and acid tiles, and I noticed you put a lot of emphasis. In the game on my pushing the enemies into those yeah, <laughs> pulling yeah. and sliding uh <clears throat> you know if you uh i think it's bull rush where you can push them in yes yes and trip them in <laughs> you know that's a that's a pretty key thing especially a lot of those battles i don't know how you do it beat it without them yeah it's a, it's a quite important yeah using the uh, using the environment to your benefit is that kind of one of your design philosophies? Yeah, yeah. Makes the battles very, very um, much more interesting, much more exciting, and you got more variety in what in, in in the encounters. For example, in this script spot, like you have that that uh, that piano, you know that keyboard instrument. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this battle, I remember this distinctly. I don't think I had <clears throat> such powerful spells at this point. But if, if you have that piano, this was a tough fight. Wow. Uh, because if you if you have a bard in the party, you can use that that piano and it will help you also. Yeah, I think my bard, I didn't like uh, the bard for the longest time until this battle. Then I, uh, I'm glad I <laughs> yeah. had a bard in the party. Yeah. Now uh, somehow or another, my bard I ended up with the, I think it was a centaur. Uh, but the charisma score was low. <clears throat> I don't know how that slipped under my. <laughs> yeah, I should have done a better character. Uh, but yeah, this this battle. You know, this is another thing I really liked about this game. Like in this battle, you, um, I think probably most of the important ones, right? You'd get some options. Like, well, if you have a bar, they can do this. If you have a warrior, mm -hmm. uh, they can do this. Yep. If you have a certain type of cleric or domain, uh, you can do this. Um, so I got really curious about those, and I'm thinking, hmm, I, you know, maybe next game, next time I play the game, I'll put those characters in just to see where these different paths lead. And I assume that's something you intended. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, just skills, character skills. Um, I think it really makes the game better. Uh, if you look at the, the first uh, game, Night of, Night of the Chalice one, they didn't have it. Did, it didn't have any skills. Uh, I mean, it has feats, of course, but. Uh, uh, and you have you had lots of uh, dialogue options, but then no no skill uses like this. So uh, 
That's something I, I really added in the, in the second in the second game, and yeah. and yeah, it's, I think it's very important to the to the game. Very important to have like as as many choices as possible. Um, going back to Edge of Decadence, really, I mean, I mean that's that's the kind of the gold standard of choice and consequence, you know. So that's something I really want to to do as well, and yeah. So a lot of focus on that. A lot of focus on uh, good NPC companions. Uh, and of course, great encounter design. That's that's really uh, what I want to focus in the, in the new modules. And yeah, not non-linear gameplay, having a world map as well, um, <laughs> more variety in the in the maps. Well, some of those uh, games with the wasteland comes to mind, and some of the yeah. Fallout series. You know, they yeah, have all yeah. those, a lot of those uh, Fallout, yeah, skills and things. You find out later. Well, I shouldn't have picked that because it really didn't have any. Actually, some, sometimes it wouldn't even be implemented at all. I could just pick, put, be putting points into this skill and it didn't do anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think your game, though, as far as I could tell, everything had some use. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nothing yeah. felt useless or just not, you know, just for role play. Mm -hmm. you know, nothing seemed like that to me. Fallout 2, uh, I, I remember putting points into the uh, gambl gambling skill. So that you can <laughs> you can go to the casino, you can you can earn money like this, you know. So it's um, kind of grinding for money, you know. If you have that high gambling gambler skill. Let's see if we can get the game going here. So let me uh, let's see where do I launch? This is for the new game, right? Yeah. I thought it'd be fun to create a character with you. Sure. <laughs> Okay, might have to turn the sound down. Please wait. So this is pretty much all you that did everything for this, right? <clears throat> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. We had Rob, Robbie doing some of the music. Hmm. Robbie Sam, a good friend of mine. There's a warlock companion as well. You know, uh, Pizza. You've uh, you've seen that character, no? Oh. Uh, which one? Uh, Pisaha, that uh, oh, yeah, 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 warlock, yeah. warlock companion. Yeah, I put her in my party. Yeah, the, the three, the last three companions, they, uh, they've got more dialogue than the, uh, than the first ones uh, that you meet. Yeah, I noticed with your, I think you actually have it, the different uh, genders have different. Uh, yeah, right. Different strengths, is that, you catch any flack over that? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, in the beginning, yeah, in the very beginning. That's why, um, that's why I, I, I added an option so that you can, uh, you can actually uh, give the female stats to the guys and uh, the male stats to the uh, women. Because someone asked for, for that, you know. I guess it's easy enough to put an option in. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you want to make a male or female? Um, yeah, female. Okay, then we got our hair types. <laughs> These are always fun. <laughs> and this kind of reminded me, oh, there's a, that kind of brings to mind some recent events. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, those, uh, I think we talked about Daggerfall a little bit. And yeah. My Magic and some of the, and of course, the gold box games had a similar Thing. I don't know what people would think. <clears throat> now let's move on to the. Uh... Now some people I noticed had criticized the game for like the centaur. You know the model doesn't change. Right. Yeah. That's that's uh, something that's going to be. Uh... The <laughs> that's going to be improved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, you'd, you'd probably want to have a. I assume you like a centaur is like part horse, right? You'd want the that, that's right, yeah, yeah. You just uh, mm. not enough budget or not enough time, or yeah, it must be a matter of time, yeah. Not not a deal breaker for me. I mean, you have some again, that's somebody that plays the gold box games. I mean, you get <laughs> you don't even have this, you just have these tokens, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, even with these, uh and like all these races, you really have to put some thought into picking one. Mm. I liked your little recommended guide. 
so many options. <clears throat> but with this, I noticed sometimes in these games, I like to just kind of put together a weird party. You know, yeah. just kind of unlikely things, but I found that not really something you want to do a Knights of the Chalice. <laughs> you really want to be thinking about what's going to be a good combination to try to get all the uh, possible advantages. Southerner human for the bard. We could make a bard. You have a, some of these are pretty unusual too. Did you, are some of these unique to you? Did you come up with some of these uh, yourself? Um, no, they are not unique. I mean, you know, they are, Men Mentis is from the Dark Sun series, you know? It's, oh, uh, that's right. Now that yeah. you know, yeah, I just made that connection. Mantis, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, the four armed um, insect that insect like creature and then we get sub races but i don't you know you, you tend to see of course a dwarf elf human, That's right, yeah. but some of these are more unusual like i don't know too many games that have centaur i'm just not used to seeing that i'd have to think pretty hard to think of another game well you have the roguelike games you know like you have add-on you've got plenty oh. of races some of those half salamander was is this the one that has the uh, you get some fire attacks or something? yeah that, that's yeah oh yeah one dc six fire damage that's, all. that's pretty cool that's on all uh yeah i'm ranged as well so i guess she's like setting her arrows on fire <laughs> yeah and then we get the choice of, so this just, if I were doing this at home and you saw the video maybe, but you know, I could spend quite a bit of time. I'd have to research like every race, <laughs> every sub race. Yeah. You know, it's, that's it's, that's you fun know, for me. I like having those options. Exactly. It's part, it's part of the fun, you know I mean? Uh, if I play Temple of Elemental Evil, I'll, I'll spend a ton of time, a lot of time, uh, you know, just creating the characters thinking like what domain powers to give to the clerics, that kind of things, you know, and thinking like uh, what character is going to go well with uh, which uh, other character class so, to create a good party. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You yeah, just many, think, think one, a lot. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How many of these? <laughs> How many? That's a lot of classes. Um, 22, I think. 22 classes and you've got six characters. So you figure you're going to have to make some tough choices. And I think, yeah, like psychic healer, psychic warrior. It's just so you could really play this game. How many heck you could you'd probably have to play it at least three or four times to get, you know, to see what all these guys can do. Mage knight. That's kind yeah. of, interesting. you know, the first one I had like the usual suspects. Like the bard, the fire barbarians and fighters. But maybe the psychics would be the way to go. Do you have a preferred uh I mean you have the party that you built for the people that don't want to make their own party. <laughs> but you know, just, uh, so, yeah. what was the most fun to uh create? Uh, the most fun to create. Oh for me, maybe some something like the wizard, you know, like because you can choose the uh the familiar, you know, oh, and the yeah. and the, the uh, elementals, uh, elemental, um, not elemental sphere. I'm talking about the druid here. Uh, no, you can choose the uh, the attunement, the moon attunement of the wizard. Um, you can oh, choose was... the familiar. Yeah, those domains, man. There are so many of. Oh, yeah, like... I was, uh, the clerics are great to create. Clerics Ooh, are even better. There's a lot of domains. <laughs> she looks uh, pretty. Yes. How about how about creating the uh, cleric instead? Because, you know, that's also quite fun. You can choose the spells and also the cleric domains. Yeah, clerics are good, powerful characters. I always like to have... A, I just don't feel right not having a cleric. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I always have to have at least one. Hey, here's that opposite gender option. That, that's right, yeah. That's right. So I put maximum... You, do you, you uh, suggest you do the maximum ability scores or do you like just to do the random... 
Uh, if it's the first time you're playing, yeah, maximum score is fine. But after us, yeah, it's better just to you hold them, you know. I just going, don't know. It's, yeah, it's going to be more fun if you if you don't give yourself the max max everything after us, you know. See, I'll sit here and roll this thing until I get a good. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't play with the cleric that had a low wisdom. Or maybe you would. You might consider it more of a challenge, right? To have a, a cleric with a 11. Would you play that character? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I, I like to have the uh, strength be a bit high, so that they can fight as well uh, as just as well as casting spells and yeah. Yeah, as probably. Well, I, yeah. Now this is one thing I did notice about this game. It got a lot easier for me once I glommed onto the idea. Hey, I need to get those saving throws up. I need to get resistance going well because uh, if you have really low scores and then something, <laughs> you're gonna notice. You're gonna feel the pain. <laughs> yeah. All right. And I think pretty much everything has a use. Again, like even charisma, I don't think is totally worthless, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you have plenty of uh, domain powers that, that use the charisma. So it, it really depends on your choice of domain power. Some, some domain powers don't require high charisma, so you can, you can forgo, forgo it. You can go without it. You probably want a good... Uh... How does a game play? I, I never play evil. Yeah, I, I, I don't usually is, play evil also. I mean, I assume you could get through the game okay as an evil character. Yeah, yeah, you can, yeah, definitely. It probably changed some of the, the like, is, how different is it to play on evil? Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't got a big, a big impact, I think. You know, it's, it's just, there are some spells that do make use of the alignment. You know, like we were talking about the protection from evil, you know, this, there are a few things like, or the holy weapons, you know, the, uh, those weapons that, that, uh, uh, that give damage to uh, creatures who are evil uh, aligned. Mm -hmm. um, holy weapons and holy weapons, protection from evil, protection from the good, that, you know, you, got, you have this gameplay impact. Otherwise, I mean, if you want to play evil, really, it's, it's in your dialogue choices. It's not going to be... Uh, it's not my my philosophy to to force on the player the choices he's going to make afterwards based on the alignment he chose in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So and that's probably the best way yeah. to do it, I think. Yeah, here we go with our divine spells. Yeah, you could easily you're going to spend some time going through these. I think no one want to know about the game the second time i played i was i think a lot better <laughs> at picking spells yeah. and thinking it would be useful because you realize <laughs> you know the, some of the stuff might be great but you're only going to get to use it once you know it, i like the stuff that's going to be useful for a long time like with some of the mage spells you last pretty much all day right until you rest again i don't know if this one cure light wound seems like a no-brainer yeah, always. <laughs> uh, bless is usually one of my favorites. What do you usually pick? Uh, pure light ones. Uh, bless, magic stone. Oh, you like the magic stone? Oh, summon, summon elemental. Three throws three magical stones. Yeah, I noticed there were some feats associated with this one. Yeah, yeah. Dealing one d six points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, so uh, yeah, you get some. It's really strong against undead. Range touch attacks. And this always kind of makes me get a little bit confused by this concept. So it's a ranged touch attack. Yeah. So this, it's going to use your dexterity roll, right? Um, How does it work? It's just you, you don't take into account the, uh, the targets are more. Um, so if they have dodge bonus, like if they have dexterity, they get those bonuses. But What's the use on my end? Is it going to be her strength or her dexterity? It's going to be um, your dexterity. If it's range, range touch attack, it's dexterity. If it's a melee, melee touch attack, it will be your strength. So she's got like a 10 dexterity score. 
<laughs> yeah. It's gonna miss every time, right? Yeah, yeah. So I mean I would text her money and say. Okay, then we get yeah, look at these domains, folks. <laughs> wow. You know, I know, Pierre, this took a long time. Yeah, yeah, I did. But, but you oh, know, it's, it, it's so much fun. <laughs> yeah, notice some of these come up in the some of the dialogues too. Like the mysticism, I remember that one. Yeah. There's a couple of battles where it's like, you can do this if you have mysticism. I'm like, oh, I wish I had mysticism. What about, I kind of went with, uh, I kind of assumed the curing and healing. But again, what are there any like little, what would you pick? Uh, if I want to make a really good character, you know, a character was, was quite powerful. I'll just take the, um, uh, this is the rich, for example, domain for a rich. Leave it below. Rich, leave it, yeah, that one. Because if you if you have that, you can cast your spells uh, from a much larger distance. And so, like sound burst, if you use sound burst. Oh so, wow! So this gives you those three feet for right off the bat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that is great. Does this work on the healing spells as well? It can if you have the other domain power that uh, allows you to to use the uh, cure spells uh, from a distance. Power metal. Whenever you conduct a melee attack, your weapon is treated as being of adamantine. <laughs> that's, that's if you want to create a, a cleric that's more into uh, melee fighting. Yeah. yeah. But then you, you, have, you, have got some, you have some domains that are more powerful in the beginning and uh, a bit less powerful afterwards. Like the summoning domains, you've got three domains that allow you to summon something, some kind mm -hmm. of monster. So I really like to have one, but uh, it's not a, it's not the most powerful option, but it's, it's really good to have. Like the uh, domain power justice, for example. With that one, you can you can summon something, and you can pretty much beat every battle with that in the beginning. Oh, that's an inevitable. Two wow. Yeah, so what you're saying is this would be good for the start, but probably towards yeah. the later game, it's not going to be as useful as some of the other ones. Yeah. Um, after us, what's very useful is, um, uh, yeah, mysticism is really good. Um, and then, yeah, because you get all those feats. Yeah, that's, so if we take these two, we'll basically get six feats for free. Yeah, and a very important fit as well. Effective your some, yeah, some, 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 some perks. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I remember looking at that. I took this one on my second playthrough because I like the idea of just bless getting a Being increase. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, that's something I use all, you know, I usually think, what do I use all the time? And hmm. you know what? Because that's going to be ultimately. Let me get our feats. <laughs> yeah, look at this you just you never run out i mean even by the end of the game you're still there's like one or two you still would like to have oh and it's just going to be more fit you know, i will i will uh, i will add some epic fits for you know when you reach level 20 and above now you can correct me if i'm mistaken here but i advise people when i was did my video on this to take die hard yeah i mean yeah why it not? really made it uh, <laughs> a lot easier for me because the mm. yeah you get knocked unconscious yeah you get automatically stabilized that was big but what I really like was this this uh, automatically recovering <laughs> I don't I mean that you don't really have a whole lot of opportunities to rest and you know replenish yeah. everything so this actually it doesn't sound like much but it really made a big difference. Yeah, I say this is yeah this is more useful in the beginning part of the game and a bit less useful afterwards. Yeah, I guess eventually you don't really need the one d eight, but no. <laughs> I don't know. Dying is not something I like. <laughs> so anything that makes it harder <laughs> to die. 
But yeah, what would you pick? You got healing mastery. You know the in, improved initiative too. Uh, is a, that the is really think, great. Yeah, there was there these very important ones in the beginning. They are improved initiative and superior concentration. Superior concentration. Those two are really quite important. Yeah, this one's your concentration checks. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing worse than when you're trying to cast that high level spell. Yeah. And it fails. <laughs> so yeah, that one may not be as useful in the beginning, but it will be very useful at the end. Um, but it's always useful. Uh, of course, we and then that down, we could get, grab that. And then yeah, th those ones that improve uh, particular spells, they are quite good as well. Yeah? Quite good, um, especially the improved sound burst when you get sound burst, because it's such, such a useful spell for the clerics. Yeah, I like the way you did this. You you made it so you could you could sort of focus on general things that would be useful periodic you know throughout the game you could focus on a really strong start mm -hmm. you could just really delve into like one spell that you really like a lot you yeah, know make yeah. that super powerful so what are we going to go with here i see you got die hard there as a recommended feat i think you said uh su superior concentration is what you would choose improved initiative maybe improved oh, initiative yeah always useful that one well, there you go. Well, there's your character. Hey, what question I had about this? Do you get more XP if you have fewer party members? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. So if you have a... <laughs> because you know it, it, it's divided between all your party members. Um, so if you add the uh, uh, the extra people, if you have the extra people, they will they, each one takes a share. So, the, yeah, always a trade-off with you, Pierre. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you get that extra person there. They're really cool to have, but mm -hmm. you're gonna be taking a little bit less XP. If you you, you want to create a wizard now, if you like, yeah, if you like, we, we can create you know, a wizard. Yeah. That's our new character there. Add her. Yeah. Let's go ahead and make a wizard too. You want to do mail this time? Yeah. What do you think looks wizardly? That looks wizardly. That one. <laughs> yeah. Bodies. Oh, blue. This person looks like a zombie. Some of these are pretty unusual. What do you think makes a good wizard? Oh, um, elf. Yeah, you got to go. Yeah. Um, you got the highs. Well, you, you know, you, you can use any any race, really. I mean, you, you know, you have that uh, Drake race, which yeah. is, uh, it's nice because you, you get the bear sweep on. Um, of course, it's, it's more interesting to give to use that race with a fighter type, you know? I don't know if you've played with it in, in your playthrough with the Drake. Oh, yeah, yeah, I have. A, you know, these breath weapons, I just found extremely yeah. useful. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a very good cast. I really like it. I like uh, not, not cast the rest, sorry. You can use it pretty much every battle, which I... Yeah, you can I use really it uh, from the beginning of the battle, yeah, you can use it. Especially and, uh, if you get that, yeah. there's a, that, that feat where you can make it not hit your own people. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You get that, you're just using it every time. Yeah. And as I see, uh, half giant, you know, it's so good with the uh, extra, extra size and strength. Yeah, and there's some, like, rocks and things you can use. If you have the half giant, you can get them to move yeah. it for you. <laughs> yeah, but for a wizard, yeah, I would take uh, elf or or human. I think with the elves we get. Elf is great. Yeah. Human, yeah. human, human. I mean, gives you the sleep effects yeah. alone is pretty cool ability. Human gives you an extra feat uh, or two extra feats depends uh, on the. Uh, I think it's two extra feats. Yeah. And then do you go with the? Oh uh, yeah, with the. Um, First one, maybe or the uh, high, high elf or the gray elf. You lose two ability points, though. Two willpower. Is it worth it? If, if I was to create, if I was to create like a, a sorcerer, I would take moon elf because it's got the extra wisdom. Uh, but this one is just um, oh, it's a, a wizard. Good. Yeah, it's a wizard, so you you take high elf. That's very good, also. 
And we're gonna go wizard. Just straight wizard. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. That's good, yeah. Not evil. <laughs> a bad boy. <laughs> uh, you know, that's, you always want int to be high, right? Oh yeah, and what you can do here is you can take that small, that little uh, square box near intelligence. Uh, you know, right above the uh, number sixteen. Yeah, that one. And you get the maximum uh, amount uh, oh. automatically. You still have a, you still have a random character, but you, at least this ability score is maximum. Yeah, notice it knocked the strength down. Looks like no, it knocked a couple. Well, that's interesting. So it gives you. What is it doing? It's kind of randomizing a little bit, right? Oh, I guess it re-rolls every time I click that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Oh, this one, he's got a high int and a high dex. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So gender, let's go on to the... Now, this is one thing, though, Pierre. Why don't you have a rat in here? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you okay. Yeah. yeah, we can we can have a rat. Oh, uh, it just broke my heart. I'm like cat, maybe. Okay. <laughs> but what what would the rat give you? What benefit? What would a rat not give you? That's a good question. What would a rat give you? You got an issue. Uh, concentration, spell resistance. There. I don't see spell penetration on any of these. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, you could get that, yeah. You could get a bonus to spell penetration, yeah. Why not? A good idea. Probably add significantly yeah. to your charisma, but yeah, to... <laughs> 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 yeah, spell penetration would work. Yeah. Good idea. Good idea. Good idea. Rat, we're going to go with... Got to be the snake, right? Oh, Raven, though, initiative. Now, this is a good example here, too. Like, you could just make this character really good with chromatic orbs. Yeah. Take the feeds, you took, you could take this familiar. You have a particular favorite familiar? Um, kind of like the Todd, you know, just for the extra hit points in the beginning because it makes you survive a lot better. But also, I mean, the snake and the raven, they're also quite good. Um, yeah, that's yeah. A tough call. Well, the spider, I mean, the spider for high spell resistance, that's also pretty useful all through the game. It's not telling how many times in this game this happens to save your life. Probably, maybe one of the best is the snake, you know, because the, the concentration, that's always really good. And in, in the uh, end part of the game, you really need to have a high concentration. So it's always really good as well. Use the snake. Snake is long. <laughs> okay, now we got spells. I'd probably go summon. What would you do? Oh, well, mage armor, you got to have that, right? Yeah, you can have that. Yeah. You don't have it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's good. Yeah. How about you pick? What, what do you pick? Uh, You've you got eight picks here, so you can pretty much pick whatever you like. I would always take Chris. Yeah. Um, I'll take uh, the, uh, at least one of these two summon spells, you know, summon elemental or summon skeleton, maybe summon skeleton. Uh, you take the skeleton over the elemental. Yeah, because I think you need only a st standard action to cast that one. So it's a bit easier. Yeah. Well, oh, the, oh, I didn't even notice that before. Yeah, so it's easier to cast. Afterwards, um, I would take uh, the magic missile. Yeah, a wizard without a magic missile. <laughs> it's like an actor without a moan. You know? Yeah. What about Gust of Wind? I... I quite like it. Is this the one that I noticed in, in the later game? I don't think it's this. I think it's Greater Gust of Wind, but I just kept getting hit over and over and over yeah, again yeah. with acid fogs and the, yeah, the cloud kills and things of that sort. And I didn't realize until way late. <laughs> <laughs> like if I have Gus the wind, I can just blow blow that out of here, man. I should yeah, have had can, this yeah. all along. But I don't think this one. Yes, yeah, so this one doesn't. 
Uh, it's some of them. It, uh, it's gonna have the greater it's, gust of wind. Yeah, like st sticking cloud, it will uh, it will remove it. I'm a little bit confused. Let me, as long as you're here, <laughs> can I ask you a question about this. <laughs> so I noticed the. Now you can cast a spell at a higher level. Is that true? Uh, yes, you, you can cast spells at uh, at higher levels than the minimum if you want to. If if you have the ability, yes. But it doesn't. Yeah, I can't change this regular gust of wind into a greater gust of ah. wind. No. With that, okay. No. So this is just its own thing. Okay. What else? Do you we got uh, four more picks. Yeah, I'll take burning hands. You know why I take burning hands? I have a guess. Well, it'd be good on those things that can only die in fire. Uh, it's kind of a little tricky. Oh, I think I see why you would take it. <laughs> uh, yeah. You're in love yeah. with these webs. Yeah, uh, the, AI, the AI likes the webs, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, so you want to web them and burn them. Yeah, I'll take that. And then. Um, I think web, but, though. We don't get web until next level. Until, uh, yeah, sleep is good. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, the major armor to protect yourself. And then, if you have a, if, yeah, if if you have a samurai or a fighter or a, gla a gladiator in your party or a death knight, you know, enlarge is quite good because you're gonna deal more damage. But uh, as well, as, yeah. This one always confuses me because it says yeah. you get it's got all these penalties, and I always wonder is it worth yeah. it. You do have the penalties, but I mean, because your size category increases, you you can deal a lot more damage. So, so it's worth it, even though you take these penalties to attack and AC. Uh, after that, also it depends on the uh, uh, wizard attunement that you choose. If you if you choose the uh, uh, alteration um, uh, attunement, you yeah. will be, you'll be able to cast enlarge uh, with a move action. So you can cast it very quickly and have a second spell afterwards. So it really depends how you specialize your wizard afterwards. I just I'm learning a lot from you here, so we need to get alteration as our yeah. As I didn't like the alteration as well. So oh yeah, you got one more pick, so you can take. Um, mm, I like say, how even you have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, color spray, I guess color spray. I like these cones and sprays. Yeah. Okay. And then we got our attainment, and we want to go. Uh, oh, wait, this is for the moons. Yeah. So this one gives you. This is the one. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. So, I mean, they, they all have stuff going for them. Uh, the red one is really powerful because the, towards the end of the game, when you do the transformation, you get like uh, plus 50% to all of your damage. So, it's really. Uh, mm -hmm. The most the most powerful uh, attunement, but I mean it doesn't mean the other ones are bad. I mean they are really good also, and uh, each one is re each one is, is really good, and and yeah with the uh, with the uh, alteration one yeah you can you can cast a large uh, as a move action and you also get a lot, lots of other benefits. If you if you take the the blue one the Meryl, uh, you um, you're gonna get more, more spells also by the end of the game. You know when you do the transformation you get so, so many spell slots, so. It's really nice one as well to take. Um, I mean, for indecisive people, this is. And also, because one of, one of the companions as well is the uh, is a sorcerer and he's got the uh, the phoenix attunement uh, later in the game. So it, you know, it's that uh, that cobalt companion. He's got he's got the red uh, the uh, phoenix attunement. So you, maybe you don't want to have another wizard who's also the same like that. So the yeah, uh, alteration is fine yeah, this time if you want. You know, just thinking while we're looking at these moons, we haven't really talked at all yet about the uh, the puzzles that you put in the game. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maybe just take a little break from that the character to talk about those. Yeah. So, yeah, what are your thoughts on putting puzzles in role playing games? Uh, uh, well, I like puzzles, but you know, I don't want them to be overly difficult. I don't want them to, I don't want the player to be to be stamped, you know, I don't want uh, the player to feel like he doesn't know how to progress the story. So but I really like having uh, a bit of, a, of an adventure game aspect. 
like adventure games like uh, Gabriel Knight, you know. Oh, uh, you like those? Those are great. Um, yeah, or Broken Broken Sword. You know, I don't know if you oh, played. Yeah, yeah, I've played all of those. Yeah, it's it's quite a fun gameplay also. Um, so I mean, I, I'd like to take some aspects from these games, but not to make them as as difficult as as, as these games are, as this game can be. You know, like Gabriel Knight was really hard. I don't know if you agree. Uh, Gabriel Knight. Yeah. Oh. One, yeah. two, three. The third one is it the third one that has that cat mustache puzzle that <laughs> uh maybe yeah. Oh it's yeah. pretty yeah, I, mean, I remember that you had to make yourself you're supposed to be making a disguise for yourself to look like somebody oh, yeah. else. And for some reason you have to make a mustache, even though the person you're trying to look make yourself look like doesn't have a mustache. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yeah. those games are yeah, yeah. Should, yeah. I mean if, yeah, I think your puzzles are probably better than some of those so. <laughs> <laughs> thank you uh, oh man you have one in here you have to do like math yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Also, you, yeah. In, in, in the category of puzzles you know you, are, you also have all these, these uh, riddles you know like the questions like you have to give an answer like the uh, you know the riddle of the sphinx you know uh, yeah or, was... yeah in in, in Boston, uh, you had like this you know the ma magic mouse Mm -hmm. We're asking something to the player. You had to type the answer. So I mean that that uh, that is uh, in my that is stuck in my head. So uh, <laughs> that's why I wanted to have some some kind of aspect with puzzles and riddles in the game, and but not so hard like that. They block the player. So I, I usually give the answer. If you want the answer right away, you can you can fix the option and they give you hints. You get some extra hints and yeah, you can progress that way. Yeah, I really like. I always enjoy those the puzzles. I didn't think they were too. Uh... You know, to uh, they didn't take me that long. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's I think it's it's nice to have like a, a lot of variety in the puzzles. Like to, I, I want you to be a bit surprised. Of uh, you know, sometimes it can be very graphical. Sometimes it can be like a chess board that you have to choose a position, or sometimes you like you have to find the right com combination of uh, of tricks. You know, um, in the big yeah. I remember talking when I interviewed Lord British. Richard Gary, it's been a while, but I remember we talked about this a little bit, and he told me that he had all these plans, you know, he had all these designs for puzzles and things, but he just didn't put them in because it got to the point where it was going to take too much work. To oh, implement. yes, yes. Mm. You know, people don't realize, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm sure it must have taken a long time, you know, to put these riddles and, and figure it out. The, I'm trying to think of some of those puzzles. I, I, I remember about, uh, you know, yeah, which but, one took a long time. Uh, uh, take the most work to implement. In Curse 2, in Curse 2, the hardest to implement. Uh, yeah. may, maybe the moon, you know, the moon uh, crypt puzzle, you know, the one where the moons are <clears throat> cycling in their phases. Yeah, I remember that one. It's a good one. Yeah, you need some extra graphics, so you need to take some time to do that. And then in, in the beginning of the game, also, there's, 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 uh, you can play a, a game of dice with one of the NPCs, you know, so. Uh, it's not exactly a puzzle, but I mean, yeah, you, you can kind of win or lose depending on what you're going to choose, what options. Uh, I mean, these are like, there are separate little games within the game. So um, they, they do take some time yeah, to script, you know, it's all scripted. Um, but yeah, afterwards, you see, yeah, yeah, you have, yes, there are plenty of puzzles, you know, plenty of, um, mm, probably the moon one, the moon one is a, uh, one of those would which took uh, which took me a long, uh, longer time. Yeah, I can tell you really like that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know the it's kind of funny to me uh, how sometimes these RPGs can have a like your dice game. You know, I think coming back to Might and Magic, you remember the Arco Mage? I don't know if you remember that. Of course, the Witcher series has their I think it's Gwent. You know, they put in these yeah. almost like these little side games that end up becoming their own thing. Yeah. <laughs> they, people like them so much. But... So, oh yeah. So this one aspect, you know, I don't know if you if you call it a puzzle, but I mean, the, the whole cryptography, you know, like when you are decoding the messages, when you have a coded coded uh, oh, yeah, a a message. Puzzle. I mean, yeah. I mean, objectively speaking, that, that's probably the one the one type of puzzle that took me the longest time to implement. Because it's so different, you know. It's a whole new, it's whole different interface. So, 
Yeah, nice. So that one, you yeah. gave some useful tools to the player too, because you could have just said, "Look, here's the message. Go figure it out." But you like have stuff in there where you can say, "Here's yeah, the yeah. most frequently used character." Mm -hmm. I think are those ruins the same ones from uh, Lord of the Rings? Uh, yeah, probably, probably. Um, I thought I recognized a few from like the. It's uh, it's, uh, it's called the uh, Elder Elder Futak, I think it's it's uh, it's actually from the real from the real world, you know. Yeah, those, I think it's ones. cool that you know it's kind of real, real life stuff, real. Yeah. But yeah, those those are fun. Uh, you know, it's it's nice when you, my wife loves to do that sort of thing. <laughs> so it's fun when you're right, playing right. a game. I'd be like, hey, you know, Elizabeth, you might want to come down and look at this part, and you know, she'll solve the puzzle. Uh -huh. and she solved the moons uh, for me. That was nice. <laughs> but yeah, it's a. Uh, I, I think it's a good, a good uh design because it's not. Like you say, if you don't want to do it or you can't do it, it's not that big of a deal, right? But if, yeah. you, know, if you enjoy it, you get a nice reward. It's worth your time. Uh, I don't know. I, I remember also, you know, uh, Ultima Underworld. Oh, what sure. Yeah. These games, yeah, they had quite a lot of puzzles as well and pretty hard ones. The uh, Ultima Underworld 2, you know, I, I remember some tough, tough puzzles in there. I think you did the right. I think you did it well. I mean, the thing that I would not want to see is like you can't move past it unless you can come up with this riddle, uh, yeah. and that just usually means you got to go to a walkthrough or some kind of you know hints, and that's not really fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think that's a good a good compromise. If you're clever enough to figure it out, here's here's some you know here's some rewards, but you don't feel too bad if you can't. Yeah, you don't want to. Okay, well, there's our wizard. Yeah, just a couple of. Oh, we still got some. Oh, we still need to pick a feet, no we? Also, the you know there are some chess puzzles. Like you have to find a position that makes you that that yeah, that allows you to checkmate the opponent. Oh yeah, I love those. Yeah. So you have. I mean, I had to prepare the whole uh, the whole set of chess pieces. You know, the graphics to 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 get that done. And, and of course, I have to think about like what positions can I use that would be a good. Uh, <laughs> A good puzzle for the player. So, and I, and I think I'm going to have some more puzzles like this uh, in the you play a lot of chess. You play a lot of chess and math puzzles. Uh, Is that I, I, I like chess. Yeah, I do like. I do, I do like that. Yeah, I'm not a very good player, but uh, yeah, I like. Her it. favorite thing is a Sudoku. Yeah, it's fun also. Right? Loves those. So if you want to put one of those in. Ah <laughs> uh, yeah 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 good idea. <laughs> Uh, I remember one game, you know, but it was on the, on the Nintendo DS, you know, it's, it's called uh, 999, uh, nine doors, nine people, uh, nine, nine rooms, something like this, you know, and it, it's got a, um, a big Sudoku puzzle at the end of the game. You, you don't know that it's a puzzle game, you know, it's, it's not an RPG. I know. It's just like, yeah. But it had a, like a, a, a big Sudoku at the end. <laughs> that was fun anyway. <laughs> My wife would have loved that. And I'd say, okay, now it's time for you to play because I'm horrible at these things. And we got our feet. Now, would you go with the range on this? Or yeah, the range, range, yeah. Or the initiative or, or concentration. Oh, but yeah, but uh, if you wanted to have... Um, Green wizard. Um, yeah, that's what we were talking about. Like, if you want to cast enlarge as a move action, then you take this one. You take this feet uh, first. So if you are if you're going to have a fighter, and it's, it's good to have that. Yeah, as well. Yeah. Pretty good fit. Yeah, I noticed your game. You really focused a lot on like implementing these rules in a, in a way that you know makes sense. So, you know, like with those move modes and uh, even yeah, like with yeah. the bull rush, there's ways to make that so you can just I, I was really I had one character, I think it was my barbarian, and I yeah, focused yeah. on tripping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very good yeah. the point where he could trip as a free action and yeah. that was really good you know because you knock them down and then they get up and you get an attack of opportunity on them yeah and if you do this with a rich weapon as well you can you can do you can reach even more enemies you know with a rich weapon like a glaive or a yeah that's yeah hey, we'll have to talk about this a little bit too the uh let me uh stop sharing there for a second so one thing that always kind of makes it hard for me you know when i was playing ice when they'll have the same issue 
like you you want to have a you want to pick weapon specific feats like you say like a pole arm or spear yeah sword but you don't really know you never know what you're going to find <laughs> uh, you yes ever find a good giz arm <laughs> <laughs> how do you say that you're, you're french right you know how to say it properly what's the uh um Gizam, Gizam. Gizam, i guess Gizam. Yeah. and then the other one i never know how to pronounce like rancier rancier uh rancier i would say rancier 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 and cuirass uh in french i would say uh, cu uh cuirass but uh, cuirass. Yeah, so okay so it is cuirass, cu cuirass. 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 Grass. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, and but you yeah, know, you know, uh, you know, you know the coup de grass. Yeah. You know, coup de grass. <laughs> oh yeah, coup de grass. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good one. French. Yeah, all these French terms. I couldn't have anything to do with certain conquest. But anyway, yeah. the uh, so Wait, how that's... do you know like what to pick? Uh, you know, what if you go with a, a spear and you all you ever find are great two-handed swords or something like that? Yeah, well, you should you should always take the two-handed swords. <laughs> that way, <laughs> you can't go you can't go wrong with these swords. I mean, you're always going to find swords. But um, yeah, I mean, you, you can you can distribute your your weapon specializations between your characters if you have several uh, yeah. war, warrior types. You know? But but you should always have like the, the one-handed swords and two-handed swords um, as a base. You know? It seems kind of hard to beat. Now, I was kind of curious why the spear, if I recall correctly, the spear is not a reach weapon in this game, right? Isn't it? A... No, no. So what was the rationale behind that? Uh, you get some, so you get another benefit from it. You get, uh, you get some kind of some uh, extra damage when, uh, when you use that against someone who was uh, doing a charge on you. You get you do some more damage on them, and I think you got you get some extra extra stuff from from them as well. Yeah, I did find some pretty cool spears. I think the spear is a simple weapon, which means you can use it with a on a wider variety of characters. The pole arm or the reach weapon. Yes, I, I, had I wanted to say I had a. I think I might have had a glaive. Hmm. Anyway, it was very useful because it had that extended reach. reach yes, on. I mean that was. Got a lot of more kills with that. <laughs> mm. uh, but my, my favorite is the great sweat. The, you, know, you know the great sweat. Oh yeah, yeah. I always <laughs> figure one. when I'm when I play a game for the first time, mm. you might have some. I'm obviously you'd have some insight on this from as a designer, but you probably figure well, everybody's going to have the long sword. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody's yeah. going to have a, uh, you know, a bow. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Max, you know, maybe a two-handed sword. <laughs> yeah. Uh, some of the more unusual weapons, I'm always hesitant about because I'm like, I might never find a decent. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. As a, as a developer, yeah, you 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 have to try to you know, you know give a good variety of, of um, artifacts, you know, special weapons, and not just give swords, swords, swords all the time, you know. <laughs> just to make everyone happy you know with that choice it's like the, the skills you know i mean you don't want to have uh, skills in the game that you never get to use so same with the weapons if you if you focus your your character on certain type of weapon that is and also there's another thing like because there's there is crafting you know in the game so you can craft your perfect weapon if you want to mm -hmm. that's also that's also um, an option that you have but yeah i mean uh, giving out artifacts of various types yeah, that's that's something that's uh, as a, as a creator, as the uh, designer of the module, yeah, that's something that you, you should bear in mind. I just think, I mean, practically speaking, I just don't know how. I mean, there are a lot of folks watching this that want to design their own mm. games. So it's something yeah. they'll need to think about. I mean, a lot of different weapon options. You can't just give every possible. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's only so yeah, many yeah. opportunities to give loot, <laughs> you know, especially yeah, yeah. good stuff. You know, so how do you? sometimes it's gotten to the point where i find a weapon and i like it so much that i'll actually take the feats <laughs> just to use it yeah 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 you can do that yeah 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 that also yeah i mean this game you get enough feet times when you can get feats it's not that huge of a thing it's not like you're just totally locked out yeah 
And you can also change your, your fleet. Uh, I mean, you can change your fleet selection from the last level up. Uh, and that's in the character sheet. You, you have an option for that as well. But yeah, wait, usually, oh, wait, usually- Wait, 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 wait. Can you repeat yeah. what you just said? What? Uh, <laughs> I you, think you I might have missed something here. What? You have a respec, respec uh, option in the character sheet. If you go to the uh, spec tab, um, you have an option. To, you can change your spells uh, from the last level up, you, you, your spells, your feats. You can you, yeah, in case you've made a mistake, you know, you, you can change your feats and your spells. Oh, just from the immediate one you just did, though, right? <clears throat> or can you change everything? No, you, you, you can't change everything. Yeah, yeah. Only, only the spells and feats, yeah. From, oh, the last, from the last level up. Oh, okay. Well, that's still really, yeah, I wish I'd known that. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I missed that. That would have made life a little bit a little uh, easier. Uh, you can sort of try before you buy almost, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that, that's the intent. That's cool. Yeah, I totally missed that. Uh, while we're talking about this, though, I was, this is the only game I, there must be some other ones, I don't know. But your crafting system, it's kind of uh, different to me because you're using uh, not just the gold and the materials, but you also take some XP. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's you know, interesting. What was the D and D? You know, it's uh, you know, it's based on D and D. What they do in D and I don't. I never really crafted anything in the. Uh, yeah, well, it's you know, it's quite like uh, Temple of Elemental Evil. You also had like a very good crafting system in there. I really uh, enjoyed the uh, crafting. You know. Uh, highly enchanted weapons, you know, fl flaming and uh, what Does that not, you know. use XP as well? Oh. Yeah, you can you also use XPs for that. Okay, I uh, didn't know. I don't think and, I ever did the crafting in that game. Yeah, in KOT2, you also have to have a, a magic diamond. To, to oh, yeah, you have the yeah. diamond. Yeah, but yeah, I, I, I really implemented a lot of enchantments in, in there. It's, it's one of the good aspects, I think. You, know, you, are, you have a lot of choice uh, in how to. Uh, and sent your weapons, you know, and armor. Yeah, it was really cool. I really enjoyed the, especially later in the game when you're not like <laughs> so desperate to level. <laughs> you can yeah, use some yeah. of the XP to spread around and, you know, get some of some extra saving throws. And some of the enchantments are pretty uh, decisive, you know, make a big difference. Can be, yeah. But yeah, have you, uh, has anybody given you feedback on the crafting, what they think about the crafting system? Oh, they, they, they love it, yeah. I really enjoyed that. For some reason, I didn't learn till later that I could make uh, arrows. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 you can. Like you I'm can sitting there at the game, like, where do I get arrows? All you got to do yeah. is, you know, it's like one steel. It's not expensive, really. You know, it's, I think yeah. it's nice to make arrows, but I just somehow missed, missed that. <laughs> the, in, in the second playthrough, is always more fun in a lot of ways because you know stuff. Uh, yeah, there, okay. There, there are also some magic arrows, yeah. Well, I think we've we've created our two characters. Is uh, I'm trying to think if there's any things that we haven't really discussed yet, but you might want to. We can even play with just those two characters, you know, just to see the the first battle, or a few battles if you want. But first, you have to yeah, you have to pick the avatar. And Iron Man mode. I just love <laughs> to see somebody try that. Do you get some special achievements if you do the Iron Man mode? Oh yeah, 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 plenty, plenty of uh, achievements. Yeah, this looks, I love this opening graphic here. People vanishing, a new dark cult, an invasion of monsters in the sewers. What? Prospect of a new adventure. And boom, we're in the game. <laughs> I love uh, that. <laughs> yeah, you know, you like to have the grid on, the, the uh, square grid. I personally, I, yeah, I prefer it. Yeah, I don't know it. how I got into this display mode. Uh, there we go. That looks better. Yeah. Well, what I do in the beginning, I just always save the game, you know, because, you know, you, you might always have to, uh, you, you might want to, uh, to be able to go back to, yeah. So I, I do that always. Create new save. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, like you're in a battle right here at the beginning. And a couple of times I've actually. Oh, if, if, if you want to, you don't. You don't have to actually. And. Uh, no, no, you could uh, yeah. pay them with the gold. Wouldn't you feel bad if you had to take that option? 
I would feel bad if I if I give if I give the gold, yeah. Yeah, I don't know who would pick that option. No, nah, no. Nah. Just for testing, you know, testing purposes, you know, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Gold. Come on. If you talk with them, like you have that little puzzle also where you have to choose to, to you have to find the mistakes in in a mandate. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. This mandate. Yeah. Yeah, this is this sure as hell is an, an official mandate. Yeah, I like though how you leave in these like you leave these on so people can see like what they can't pick. Oh yeah, yeah. That's clever because you're like, oh well, you know, if I had a streetwise, if I had that, you know, right. I know what that does, you know, now I know where that would be useful or that domain. Yeah, yeah. And you do you do a good job, I think, throughout giving lots of these possibilities. Yeah, because if you don't display it, I mean, uh, many players will just go through the game and just uh, they will not know they will not know that these options actually exist. You know, <laughs> so I like this little stain. <laughs> <laughs> you had some fun with this, didn't you? Point out why? Oh, I can't. I did, I couldn't point out why. Yeah, you can put, you can you have to click on the areas. Oh, you know, I didn't know that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's I what you Oh my god, I didn't know that. I thought you just had to click the thing. No, it's a bit of a puzzle, you know. That's why. Oh, I didn't even see the stuff here. Yeah, click on more flawed areas. Okay. Oh, I see. So oh wow, I did not even notice that. So I can't, okay. <laughs> Missing seal. <laughs> well, you just taught me something new. Uh, you know, two, three playthroughs. I didn't even notice that. Oh, uh, yeah. So that's actually a puzzle. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You're supposed to see it, how ridiculous it is and say the, uh, get into combat. Leave these thieves now. Nope, you die. Now, come back. Back. This will be tough with just two people. But actually, uh, you can have more fun with this uh, with these guys because. Um, <laughs> there we go. Oh yeah, that's the uh, if you click on the middle uh, button of the mouse, you know the middle middle button. Yeah. Yeah, it's the right mouse button. Look around. Right. Middle. But with, with that mandate thing, you know, uh, the nice thing that you can do is um, if you have a rogue in the party, I think you need to have a rogue. Uh, you can uh, you can actually get the mandate or a copy of the mandate for yourself, and after that you can show the mandate to travelers and people. And oh no them. way! Yeah, yeah, you can do that. <laughs> oh, that is wow! You want to do that? <laughs> no, let's just kill him. Yeah. Now the way I would approach this, let's see, we got one guy. There's probably some more hiding around here, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So if you, uh, I'd probably start by putting mage armor on, but you might want to you might want to summon a skeleton, right? Yeah. Oh, by the way, mage armor. You know, you can have it cast uh, automatically uh, out of combat. That's yeah. something. If you want, I'll show you afterwards. If you yeah, don't know, yeah. I use that. I, I would I would cast yeah the summon or the grease or or. You do the grease. Uh, the first one is the grease. The first one, yeah. Where would you put it? Uh, you you make a square uh, around that guy, yeah, like this, yeah. Oh, counter spelled for you. Uh, you were counter spelled. Right. <laughs> <laughs> counter spelled. So now he's. I think that's all he can do, right? Yeah. Run away. Or, I don't know what else. What is this? Enlarge. I'll enlarge my cleric, maybe. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Yeah. Oh yeah, because move action. Yeah, so yeah. Okay, but now he's definitely done. Yeah. You know we're going to die. <laughs> what about uh, our, uh, No, you won't. Uh, I would just attack. Uh, attack the wizard. Yeah. You straight up attack. Oh, no, because only 25% chance to it. Uh, so then, then we're going to die. <laughs> we're going to die. <laughs> <I'm done. laughs> no, a uh, divine spell, maybe something. Um, <clears throat> Try the magic magic stone. Oh, you need a summoning, yeah. Maybe, um, yeah. Try. Oh no, twenty percent chance. So can't do. 
You see what I've been dealing with? <laughs> um, Maybe he'll get lucky. Well, at least they missed. I know that those were touch attacks. Well, maybe the wizard has saved the day. Should we yeah. try Grease again, or you think summon? Uh, summon, summon. If you summon, yeah, that would be useful. Because we only have two characters here, so. There. Oh! <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can't. <laughs> well. <laughs> well, well, well. Oh, he's got a 60% chance to hit now. Yes. Oh, they bless. This is the first battle. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But, yeah. you know, we, we didn't have a full party. No, of course, yeah. But actually, you know, if you just have one cleric and uh, one of the summoning domain powers, like justice or aberration or endless, you know, if you use that power, you summon that monster for you, that will fight for you, you can build them. Uh, with just one or two or three characters. Or if you have one really strong guy, you know, one strong samurai and you cast enlarge on, the, on them, um, yeah, you might, you wow. have a much better chance. If you could do that with one person, one character, I would be really impressed. <laughs> if, it's, if it's one character, I definitely need to have something that someone who can summon, you know? Yeah, you could summon the creature. See, this one thing though, like this game, you're always thinking of, oh, could I do it? You know, maybe if I went back and tried this and that and you know, yeah. this and, and that's what makes it fun. <laughs> this is about, hey, you don't care. You know, you, you this could have just, you could have made this battle so that it just, there's no way to lose it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But that would have been lame, I think. Like, this is, it's okay. <laughs> you lost, you got yeah. this, but hey, go make some new characters or reload, try a different strategy. Uh, yeah. You know. and, and you know, I mean, this this comes after the tutorial adventure. You know, this is another adventure. You know, you've you've played it. Yeah, the uh, tutorial I thought was yeah. really well done because it's almost like an it's its own bonus game. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not just straight. It's how to say it. It's like it's not just uh, information. No, no, no. You know, there's there's a game there, an adventure story. All right, Fury. Well, we've been talking for a while. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I guess uh, I don't know what time it is for you. Were um, are you? No, for me, it's just getting the day's just getting started. It's ten to six p.m. Well, that's good. Good stop point. I think. Is there anything else though you want to mention? Uh, plan. Oh, we need to look at the Twitter. Twitter questions. Do you have a minute for that? Oh yeah, sure. Let's take a look at that. I'll bring it up here in just a second. We can see what questions were sent in. I can share that with you. Let's see. Okay. Looks like there's one from Sean. Could he implement an easy mode? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you want an easy mode, though, don't you? Yes, yes. No, there's already an easy mode, Sean. Okay. Let's look at I love RPGs. Can you bring your party over through all Knights of the Chalice 2 modules? Uh, your party from, from, the, from the Augury of Chaos module or from the uh, upcoming modules? I'm not sure what they, what, what they yeah, mean. I'm not sure uh, either. I mean, but it's, it's going to be a series of three uh, linked modules, the, uh, the, the upcoming modules. So you will have the same characters. You can bring the, the, you can bring your party from the first module to the second and then into the third one. But it's, it's not going to be the, the, the same characters that you use in the a, in a, in a first game, in the Augury of Chaos. Because, I mean, at the end of the, uh, of the game, you reach level 20, 21, 22, 23. So, I mean, <laughs> it's better start over, you know, from level one with the new modules that's going, that are going to be coming. Yeah, I, was, I thought it was a good decision. That At first, I was like, why? I thought when you play the tutorial, you'd be able to take those characters into the next uh, yes. info yeah. game. You know, I, and the more I think about it, I, I actually don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's useful to learn, you know, about characters. Yeah. Yeah. Then you make your party. I actually liked that quite a bit. I thought it was, at first, I was not sure, but I think, I think old, now, now I think it was the right, I like the way you did it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's look at uh, Stephen Wolf here. 
Question for Pierre, when you were working on Knights of the Chalice 1, did, did, were you already, probably mean, so were you already thinking about eventually evolving for a much more deep game as is Knights of the Chalice 2? Um, yes, I think so, yeah. Um, definitely towards the end, I mean, definitely after, after the, uh, the game, the Knights of the Chalice one was uh, almost finished. Yeah, definitely, I was talking, uh, thinking about it because, you know, like, like I said, I mean, the tools, the tools of uh, KLT one, they were really hard to use. So I was thinking, like, uh, lots of people were asking me, like, make more, make more content, make more adventures, make more. Don't change the system. Just use the same system. Uh, Produce mm -hmm. some add-ons, DLCs uh, for KLT one. And I didn't, you know, because why I didn't? Because I was thinking, like, oh. It would be so good to make a new system with, with a lot a lot more uh, races, classes, and uh, um, much better tools for creating adventures. So yeah, I mean, I had that idea for a long, long while, and I, I and I prefer to focus on on creating that new system rather than just creating more content for the first game, you know, mm -hmm. because it was a bit it would be really really hard to 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 expand the first game because um, I didn't I didn't design it. Uh, to, uh, to 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 just add new classes into the game, you know. So it's very limited in that respect. The first the first game. So I just had to create a yeah, Kochi two, and, and I'm happy I did, you know. <laughs> First, it makes me wonder if there, if yeah. there's going to be a third game, and would you go back uh, again uh, to design a new engine, or would you know what would? You uh, well, modules for a long time, I think. Yeah, I mean that's that's more like my idea, you know. Just create modules, you know. Just make, improve the game, keep on improving the game, mm -hmm. uh, improve the graphics, improve the, the scenarios, improve the map uh, map graphics, uh, create more feats, you know, create more monsters, create more scenarios. Yeah, create just add, add more modules. Create a uh, new familiar. New familiar, uh, rat familiar. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> No, I do wonder if the you, know, you reach a point where there's a kind of diminishing returns, like going back and creating a new engine yeah, versus uh, just uh, Gary had gotten into that. He thought every Ultima had to have like a new, hmm. new thing. Well, I mean, if, if I was to create a new engine, I mean, what what would it what did what would it bring? You know, it's not going to bring real time with pause. Uh, I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> oh <laughs> my God! Don't do that, man. <laughs> Uh, it, it might bring 3D graphics, but you know, I mean, 3D graphics, it, you know, it has flaws. So it has disadvantages, like it makes the game slower, or uh, you know, it takes a lot longer to load the saved games if you if you go for 3D graphics. So I'm not sure that's that's uh, really such an improvement. Uh, I, I'd rather work on the on the QT2 and uh, and then just new modules, you know, at least for the time being, anyway. Yeah, I think that's yeah. the right approach. I mean, that, if somebody wants all that stuff, there's that, those games already exist, right? They're, they're yeah. Out. We want this to be something special. Uh, let's see. David Muldowney. Yeah, I was curious about this question. Ask him about surviving <laughs> by eating roots. Yeah. His development. What? Is that some kind of inside joke there? What, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's a joke, yeah. Um... Yeah, because I did, I did mention at some point that I was eating roots, uh, but you know, but I, I, I still do eat roots, but I mean, I'm sure you eat roots as well. You eat ginger, ginger roots, no? Ginger. Oh, yeah, or, yeah. Oh, ga just ga garlic, that kind of I stuff. I want to give away one of your puzzles, but yeah, you made a... <laughs> yeah, I mean, because, um, you know, I, I, I like healthy foods, you know, I, I'm into this, too, so um, yeah, that kind of food is really healthy to eat, you know. Um, sorry? Are you a gardener? No, I'm not a gardener, but, <laughs> but I like to eat seeds, you know, seeds and, uh, and things like ginger, garlic, uh, coriander, parsley, that kind of stuff, you know? Oh, um, sure. So, I mean, um, yeah, that, that's why this, uh, it started from, from this from, from this thing. Um, people made it a, a joke, you know, because like, uh, you know, it, it sounds like if you eat roots, like uh, you must be uh, deprived of everything, but I mean, no, it can, it can be a choice. You know? it, can be like, it can be that you are choosing to uh, live healthily and uh, yeah, you're trying to do what's best for your body. And it's it not- wasn't like yeah. you were starving to death. Sorry? 
it, it wasn't like you're starving trying no, to no no <laughs> <laughs> no but i mean there is, there is some truth in the fact that if you if you spend years and years and years developing a game and you're not you're not selling it yet i mean uh, so it's, it's not doing you any favors uh, financially <laughs> financially wise you know you have to be a bit crazy and in that's uh, in that respect it's, uh, i agree <laughs> yeah you know, i think there's a lot of a lot of folks that are they you know they probably would like to take their hand to making the game but yeah, that that exact thing, right? You, mm -hmm. you can't just are you gonna are you willing to like commit? Yeah, <laughs> you know, and not try to work because you you know could you have done this you know just kind of part time a little bit of time here and there? I mean, you really need time. Yeah. So I say, yeah, you, you just have to put in the, the time. You know, you can't. Uh, no. I did, I did. I did. I mean, for a long while, I did it part time. But after that, I had to spend years uh, doing it full time. So this, I know there's some yeah. a lot of people are probably like me in this regard. You start a project, maybe maybe like for me, I get the summer result. Hmm. You know, so you got all this time, you make a lot of progress, but then job yeah. starts up again, and it's just too hard. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't have two full time jobs. No, no, no. <laughs> but you know, that's why also I wanted to have that that uh, module editor. You know that. Uh, Mm -hmm. that really good editor because then you, you you can you can do it at your own time and you can yeah you can really be productive you can make scenarios and maps you know you can make a you can make a new adventure and it won't take you nearly as long you won't i mean and as a developer i won't have to be working constantly on programming 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 all the time you know because i can just use the editor you know so i'm tempted to take a stab at that editor yeah you should yeah. rats of the chalice <laughs> social studies <laughs> That's a good a good name, yeah. To it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pierre. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. It's been awesome. Thank you, Matt. And uh, um before we finish now, I mean uh, I want to ask you, like uh what parts of the game did you like the best or did you like the least? Uh, uh, well, those are some you did have my favorite creatures in there. I like to kill rats. You did that. Yeah. <laughs> right off the bat i love that uh you know you, you 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 do all the stuff i like you know starting off killing rats and by the end of it we're killing dragons i mean how can you mm -hmm. you know argue with that i thought the yeah i really like the feats mm -hmm. you know i'm really missing now that i've, I've been went back to play some ice with dell and I'm, I'm missing like the feats ah uh, yes yes <laughs> mm -hmm. and that's a big thing i like the heck i don't character really, character spe like, specialization yeah. It was always fun to. Now my like, wife thinks yeah. I hated the game. You know, I told her I was going to interview you today, and she's like, "Oh, I feel bad for him. You're probably going to yell at him." <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> so yeah, but you're screaming at this game. You know, you hated this game. I'm like, no. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, you know, of course, you get upset when you lose a battle yeah. or something, but I mean, it doesn't mean you're not having fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. She, she doesn't understand. <laughs> and so, in, in the in the uh, upcoming modules, like, what, what do you, what would you like to see more? Of? Like, what what aspect of the game do you think I should uh, focus more on, from your point of view as an expert in uh, in all playing games? You now, she would probably like more puzzles. I would probably, hmm. Not kingdom management. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I'm scratching that off. Yeah. Uh, I kind of like the. Yeah, I'm trying to think of you know you got I don't know what you what you could put in that you don't already have. <laughs> Maybe just more. <laughs> what I would, uh, okay. You know, I guess probably the thing that I would. Sounds like kind of a minor thing, but it, it would be cool to have like the centaurs and things that look. To have Z? You know, like, yeah, the graphics, yeah, like the, uh, the, uh, we call them the tokens, I guess. Mm -hmm. Little animated things would be fun. Uh, probably the only thing I didn't like was the, some of the bigger battles I noticed, like the AI would, I don't know if this was just something on my computer, but like the AI would say, AI is thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 now that got you know that was tough you know some of those big like those big battles in that 
when you go into that keep mm -hmm. you got these huge battles and like, oh no quit thinking <laughs> well you can switch you can switch to the uh, accelerated ai you know you have that option as well yeah yeah, sure. yeah yeah uh and another one for some reason i on mine the uh when the archers would shoot arrows at me yeah it would think a long time <laughs> yeah about that. That, i don't know what's what going on yeah, I mean, it's, it's best to switch to the uh, accelerated AI thing, I think, sometimes for the big battles. You know, accelerated? I think I had it on accelerated. I, I could be mistaken. Ah, I'm not sure, yeah. And, you know, I might have gotten mixed up and said it on something else. I noticed when I played it the second time, it seemed like there were some new options there. Did you add something fairly recently to that? Uh, no, no, no. I thought there was an option that I didn't see before. It was like uh, something about pathfinding, long paths or something. I could just be making stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, but yeah, you... but, but for, for you, it's, it's always more important the gameplay and, you know, the, uh, the encounters, the tactical com combat, and not so much the uh, NPC dialogue and companions, like, and have a story developed with the companions, no? You know, no, I don't, you know, I, I've thought about this a lot, and I don't think mm -hmm. putting in a whole bunch of dialogues and things of that sort really is where I would want to be focused. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's probably the coolest thing to me is really cool environments. Yeah. You know, it's the things that people tend to remember, like, oh, you remember in Pool of Radiance or Might and Magic series where you go into that pyramid? <laughs> you know it's so cool and you know stuff like that is what makes it fun right mm -hmm. places that you go um, yeah. you know always i like secret areas right right <laughs> those yeah. are always fun you're like how do i get in that part of the map huh mm -hmm. <laughs> oh those right. are cool uh then it's best to play with a rock no i mean if you never want to miss some kind of uh, secret passage you know yeah, it comes back to adventure. Some of the things I love about adventure games, like uh, the Rim or Mist, you know, those sorts of series. You know, it's hardly anything that's just purely decoration. Like, mm -hmm. there's always like something. There's like a little clue in that. Yeah. You know, colors of that painting or something. And, you know, oh yeah, yeah. It's always just fabulous. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, like taking notes as I play along and say, okay, you know, there was some kind of pattern on the floor. I don't know what the heck that was, but now that I'm at this puzzle, I see. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. you know those are fun uh yeah maybe uh more stuff like that would be cool but i mean you've yeah, already yeah. got some of the, so many of the things are already here that i really like the levels the, you know one thing i thought was kind of curious now that i'm thinking about it were you tempted to make as far as i know you can't i could be mixing up my games but like with this game you're a wizard you pick wizard you're always a wizard right yeah you know, this would never win or nice. You take like a level of this, a level of that. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't yeah. know if that necessarily make it more fun or not. You know, what what are your thoughts on that? Multi-classing, yeah. Multi-class. You, like, you like multi-classing? Personally, I, I don't like it much, you know. I mean, yeah. I don't really, really like it either. It's just mixing up too much. Also, I mean, uh, in, in Dark Sun, in the Dark Sun games, I, I, I did enjoy the... Um, the characters who had like uh, two or three classes, but, but they were all progressing at the same time. So it's not like you, you were uh, choosing one uh, class or one, another at every level up. You, you know, you had all the classes progressing at the same time. So it's, it's kind of like the sorcerer or warlock, you know, those classes in QT2, which are actually have two, uh, which, are, which are a hybrid of two kinds of magic. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it works that way. I mean, it, I don't think it's really necessary to have, to have some multi-classing. Um, the way the way D and D three point five had multi classing. You know, I always get so confused in those D and D roles when when you do that because you're like, well, can I do I need to wear armor? Can I not wear armor? Yeah. Can I cast the spell? And then, eh. Yeah, <laughs> it's, better, it's better if you just know what you're getting into. Like, here's a class that's already set up that has fighting and magic. You know, yeah. I don't know what more you need. That's you my pref preference also. You know, I was talking to Robbie a little bit about this game, and he did some of the music for it. And he he we, we talked we had a little conversation about a game, uh, an RPG, and why there's not more uh, heavy metal, mm -hmm. you know, on the soundtrack. And you know, I thought about that. Yeah, and that's yeah. yeah, that why not? 
<laughs> you know, all those uh, classic heavy metal bands, yeah. uh, Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, I mean, it's, it's Man of War, you know, they got this strong fantasy. Some of them even have songs about Lord of the Rings, you know, fantasy stuff. So, <laughs> like that, yeah, that'd be kind of cool to see, like, a more, or here, I guess, more of a metal, you know, really yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> some of that symphonic good, metal be a, totally good, awesome. good suggestion good suggestion for the music yeah you know you are even in i'm trying to think even like diablo which is probably one of diablo, the most oh, yeah. i mean very dark and basically satanic <laughs> <laughs> oh, even I, 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 it's yeah. not really metal i love the music in diablo yeah it's good I music it. yeah but you know very it's good. not it wouldn't have been out of place, I think, in a game like that to have some heavy metal music. Mm, something to yeah to think about. Yeah. I think it'd be cool to have a bar that was a ah uh, yes, you know, <laughs> <laughs> kind of like your classic uh, yeah yeah you know, not somebody out of Man of War in as your bar. I mean that'd be so cool. It's a good idea. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, give Robbie the credit for that idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, yeah. Well, is there anything else, Pierre, you want to talk about? Uh, yeah, no, that's it. We've uh, we've already covered everything, I think. We've covered everything. Uh, more <laughs> blood, more gore. Yeah, yeah. that's important. Yeah, always <laughs> good. All right, well, well, let's stop it here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. again. Folks, go get the game. Now, Oh, I got one last question for you. Yeah. Now, somebody wants to buy this game. Obviously, they have some options. They go to Steam. They could go to GOG. Now, is it better for that for you? Yeah. If they buy it from your website, um, or does it not matter? Well, I mean, it makes a little bit more money for me if I if I buy it on the website. But you know, I mean. If someone is used to playing on Steam or playing on the, on on GOG, I mean they, they should do that. You know they should buy it on Steam or use it. Whatever is more convenient for to the player, you know, it's what they should do. You know, so I mean of course Steam and, and GOG will take the, the cut. So I mean in, in terms of money, it's best to buy on, on on the website. But that's fine. You know I mean if if they buy on Steam or so they can put a review. Uh, on Steam, right. they get the achievements, right? That's that the only. Oh, yeah, one? yeah, yeah, and they get the they get the achievements. So I mean, yeah, yeah, it's, well, it's too late, too late. Late. I was afraid that if they bought it from Steam, like you'd lose a big chunk of revenue. But it sounds like it's no. you know, not that big of a deal. Now, what about the Arc Mage pack? Ah, uh, yes, yeah. yeah well, yeah, it's uh, oh, it's got more stuff than I thought. So that's got a guidebook. Yeah, two guidebooks. Yeah. Two guidebooks. Two guidebooks, yeah. Yeah, that sounds like you definitely want that. Yeah, especially if you want to create some uh, some modules, you know, um, then you really should uh, look into it. 410 page guidebook? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that right? 410 pages? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like if, you, if you're thinking like which spells are good at each level, you know, what spells should I pick? What fits should I pick? You know, that's also good advice about that. You have 410 pages worth of advice. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I wasn't alone to do, to do it. I didn't do it alone. You know, so there was also Joanny who helped me. That's incredible, though. So I think that's only like 10 extra, thir was it 14? Wait, how do you get the, can you yeah. buy that separately? Uh, buy what? You get the, the uh, guidebook separately somehow if you already own the game and ah. you just, just uh, oh you just have to you, you, have, you just have to buy the pack you will get everything else in the pack okay i think with steam you can do that pretty you just upgrade to the package right somehow yeah all right yeah. folks well if you want to learn more about this game you can watch the previous video you can go to heroicfantasygames.com battle of the sands libertarianism Libertarianism. Oh, that's a whole different topic. <laughs> <laughs> I just not noticed this on your side. Oh. Okay. Anyway, uh, let's just stick for nice, nice of the chalice for this. Um, thank you. Thank you, Matt. Oh, thank you for taking the time. Wow, it's been great. 
Thank you so much. And if people want to contact you, they can go to the website too. I see you have the, your Twitter feed there, Discord server, pretty much all the stuff. Okay. <laughs> but thanks again. And I will see you hopefully pretty soon. You're going to uh, come out with some new modules. Yeah. It was like the next step. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You have an idea about how long that might be? Oh, um, I'll try to do something. I try, I try to do something close to the uh, to the Augury, of course, mo uh, module. Yeah, but I mean, probably probably it's going to be a, a bit shorter because I won't have uh, I won't have as much time, you know. And it's you know it's going to be a, a three modules. So uh, um, the first one will take you from level one to level thirteen, maybe, and then second one from from thirteen to twenty, and then from uh, the third one will take you from twenty to thirty levels, maybe. So I mean. I suppose they're going to be shorter, but I mean, it's it's it should be uh, it should be determined later on, you know, depending on how much time I uh, actually get well, to, to work on that. Sounds great. Maybe I can have you back on later. We we'll talk about those. Oh yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah. All <laughs> right. Have a good day. Thanks again. Thank you. You too. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Thank you. Bye bye. And that's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, should be back uh, soon, probably next week, with an interview with Bruce Nesmith, the former creative director of TSR. <laughs> really expecting a lot of great stories from him. I'm sure we'll have a lot to talk about. Uh, if you've got suggestions, uh, questions you want me to pass on, you know, put them on uh, YouTube or Twitter, whatever uh, works for you, Discord, and I will uh, do my best to get to those. Uh, but anyway, that should be coming out relatively soon. Uh, as always, I want to thank you, yes, you, very, very, very much. You make these shows possible. There would be zero <laughs> Matt Chats <laughs> uh, without your help and support. Uh, you know, in some small way, I'd like to think we're doing our part to, you know, uh, promote you know, indie CRPG development and preserve uh, video game history. We're doing a lot of... Uh, uh, good things here, I would like to think, uh, and you're really part of that, and, you know, I really appreciate your help. Uh, you know, recently we kind of lost some support. <sighs> you know, I don't want to get into it, I don't want to complain, but, you know, I was kind of in need of a little boost. Uh, fortunately, when I put my, my call out, I basically said, you know, if, if, if I can't get some folks to, uh, you know, join the team, it might be the end of Mad Chat. <laughs> you know, kind of alarming, but... Uh, fortunately, some uh, folks saw that, retweeted it. You know, next thing you know, I've got some brand new uh, Ratrons on account of that. So thank you very much for that. Uh, remember, all I ask is a buck a show. Uh, sometimes uh, you might be contributing and not realize that just retweeting something, <laughs> posting something on Facebook, or you know, telling somebody on Discord about Matt Chat, you know, that can have a make a bigger impact than you might uh, think. Uh, so whatever it is you do to support the show, just know that I appreciate it. And I did want to give a shout out to some of these new Ratrons. It's kind of exciting. Uh, Gerald, Scott, JD, Tired Gaming Dad, George, Dylan, Pierre, and Tom, Adam, Tybalt, and Retail. Thank you for, you know, welcome to Matt Chat. Hang out with us on Discord. Love to hear from you. Uh, but again, uh, new or long supporters of the show, hey, <laughs> thank you. Really, really appreciate it, guys. All right. What about that news from the Matt Cave? All right. First up, Alan wrote in, a lot of folks did, about Celasta, Crown of the Magic. has got a new DLC out. <laughs> you know, this is another fabulous uh, game. I, I love these games. They really get into the minutia of the rule set. Uh, this was certainly one. Now, I had Emil on, interviewed him uh, from, you know, shoot, I didn't write down the name of the company, like Tactical Adventures, something like that, if memory serves. Uh, but anyway, I remember him saying that they weren't really satisfied. The team wasn't really happy with the original campaign, just didn't think the story was there. But he was really pumped for this uh, DLC. Uh, so I'm eager to get into it and see what, uh, see what all it has to offer. It does have a new story, obviously. Uh, they call it a replayable, non-linear story. So that'll be fun to see what they did differently. <laughs> uh, also has new foes, new subclasses. A new co-op mode, so you can go back and play the original campaign or this one with up to uh, three other people. Uh, so it really sounds like it's well worth this $12.99, uh, the charging for it on Steam. You know, maybe it'll bring that game up to the 
to the next level. Uh, <laughs> speaking of which, <laughs> as a brand new uh, campaign from levels for levels one to twelve. Uh, so that should be exciting. Uh, next up, Dungeons and Dragons owner Hasbro. Did you, <laughs> did you realize that Hasbro, <laughs> you know, GI Joe and Transformers people, uh, own D and D? Well, uh, now they own D and D Beyond. Uh, that's a the RPG's leading digital tool set. You know, I know a lot of folks that use this refer to it when they're playing the tabletop game. Uh, well, I guess that was uh, I guess they were licensing it that company, but now Hasbro owns it outright. This uh, uh, this operation. Now I'm not sure yet what it means. If it's good news, bad news, doesn't really matter. News. Uh, I don't know. There's some speculation. Maybe they'll do more PDFs. Uh, maybe they'll integrate more stuff. Maybe there will be uh, uh, some upside. I guess. <laughs> on, on the downside, though, this could also mean more data collection. You know, more. Who knows? You know what they're going to do with this. Uh, there's always a way to spin things in an ominous direction, if you prefer. Uh, but anyway, I don't know what I, th I don't know what to think about it. If you have an opinion, love to, to read that and discuss it with you, because uh, I don't know. Uh, now this next item is really super cool. I think there is a, it's, it's a little bit to this. So just bear with me. There's something called a fantasy console. Uh, it's called Pico or Pico P I C O eight. Now it's not a real. It looks like an emulator of some retro gaming console you've never heard of. <laughs> but that's kind of what they're going for. It's not. It's not really an emulator. It just kind of looks like one. You know, it's not really like a console. It just kind of looks like one. Kind of works uh, the same way. Yeah, they call it. A, it's like a regular console, but without the inconvenience of actual hardware. Uh, that's Pico eight. Now that's pretty cool in and of itself, just to get around and play with this thing. But what I liked. Or the reason I'm doing a new segment on it is somebody has taken Dune 2. Uh, they've remade it for this fantasy console. It's called Undune 2. And just have a look at this thing. I mean, this is really impressive. I think you're going to want to check this out for sure. It's got all three Mintats, all nine mission levels, animated maps and intro, music and sound effects remade for the, this Pico 8 system by Gruber. Uh, just Lots of really cool stuff. I think if you're a fan of uh, uh, Dune 2, uh, Dune 2 uh, you will want to check this out. But you might also be interested in this whole Pico 8 phenomenon. Uh, it seems to be gaining some steam. And it just seems pretty darn cool to me. So, <laughs> and, you know, as a fun poking around with this, uh, this website, I'll put it in the uh, show notes for you. All right. Uh, let's wrap it up with a quote. And I was uh, looking for quotes about chalices. <laughs> I bet you can guess <laughs> what quote came up. I mean, who could forget this? The pellet with the poisons and the vessel with the pestle. The chalice from the palace has the brew that is true. Now, you might have heard that. Somebody quote that and not realize what it's from. Well, it's from Danny Kaye uh, from a movie called The Court Jester. <laughs> you know, I guess that's from like 50s or something like that. Uh, anyway, I just think that's a fun quote. Uh, anyway, I think that'll do it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that, and see you next time. Dumbbell, Lingering. Shut up. Shut up. Silent. Hush. Sit on it. Can't Boy, it. am I the jerk of the world. You just programmed. Jerk of the world. Turkey. <laughs> Idiot. Pain in the ass. <laughs>